can only hope that Kurt Schilling deals the cards a loaded deck. Tick. Tick. Now is the time. Tick. The world champion Diamondbacks came out of the gate sideways, looking anything but regal. Even the specter of Randy Johnson on the hill was brushed aside by the car. Now the other half of Arizona's two-headed heel monster, Kurt Schilling, must deliver, but he's done this before. Now is the time. The emotion in game one came from the St. Louis side. Morris was no welcome mat for the champs. Can the late season import veteran Chuck Finley put the hammer further down on the D-backs? The Redbirds were sharp in their 12 to rock. There's tension in the desert. Now is the time. They are ready here in Phoenix for game two of the National League Division Series between the champions Diamondbacks and the St. Louis Cardinals hoping to go two up before they go home for the weekend. Hello once again, everybody. I'm Chris Berman along with Rick Sutcliffe. So glad you could be with us. Uh, Kurt Schilling, big game start. Well, think back to last postseason. Six starts, all of them stellar, winning four games. I don't care what names you use in postseason past. Sandy Koufax, Bob Gibson, Christy Mathewson, Walter Johnson. None outdid Schilling. So, Sut, today, should we... Should there not be any question as to whether Kurt Schilling will come up with a big game? I don't think there's any question in even St. Louis's mind that he's going to come up with a big game plan. He always does that, probably prepares better than anybody in baseball. Boomer, he just simply doesn't beat himself. He throws strikes. He fields his position. He holds the running game down. He handles the bat. He needs to come up big for them here this afternoon. What kind of season did he have when he won his 21st game? He walked only his 21st batter. So knowing he's around the plate, we saw the Cardinals jump on Randy. Andy Johnson often first pitch hitting. Should they do it even more so against Schilling this afternoon? Well, if it's a pitch that they can handle. If he stays on the corners, they're just going to have to take those pitches. But if he's in the heart of the plate, they're going to swing the bat. This, we talk about the St. Louis lineup, their power and their speed. The one thing you can't forget, they had the fewest strikeouts of any team in the National League. I know Schilling had 300 of them or more during the course of this year, but they're tough to get. The Cardinals dispensed of Randy Johnson in Game 1. Can they do the same against Kurt Schilling in Game Game two, or does Schilling have other ideas? We'll be back. ABC Family's Major League Baseball Division Series. Brought to you by 1010-220. Dial it, and all calls up to 20 minutes are 99 cents. You know, it's funny. Sometimes I hit a lot of home runs, and sometimes nothing. Yeah, man, I know what you mean, because sometimes I score a lot of touchdowns, and sometimes I don't. Yeah, some months I make a lot of phone calls, others not so many. That's why 1010-220 is so great. It's cheap, whether you use a little or a lot. All calls up to 20 minutes are 99 cents. It's perfect for me. Yeah, and sometimes Emmett buys me lunch. Sometimes Emmett do what? And sometimes Emmett leaves a big old fat tip. <laughs> Dial 1010-220, then one and the number. Hey, go ahead. You've always got time for a Reese's fast break. Creamy Reese's peanut butter, nougat, covered in milk chocolate. Get lost in a Reese's fast break. I was really hurt. So I took control fast with Advil Liquid Gels. Tylenol's no match on tough pain. Advil Liquid Gels are faster and stronger. You have the strength to get rid of pain faster. Take control. Take Advil. Want a close shave while avoiding razor burn? The new Extreme 3 from Schick balances three blades on a central pivot for a close, comfortable shave. Extreme 3. Get close, not burn. Inside all of us are like a billion verbs, just waiting to get into action. The ones you choose are up to you. For more information, there's verbnow.com. Get your parents' permission before going online. Verb, it's what you do. 
the Ingles, you'll get a lot more Million Dollar Searches on. It's your chance to win more exciting cash prizes, more free groceries, or a million dollars more when you match the Ingles storefront. Millions of dollars in prizes will be given away with a million dollar winner guaranteed. So start your search at Ingles today. Save big on Carolina Pride boneless half ham, regular or pre-sliced a low $1.99 a pound. And Libby's Vegetables, Green Beans, Corner Peas, three cans, only $1 at Ingles this week. An air of anticipation here at Bank One Ballpark. They saw Randy Johnson lose, and not very prettily, if that's a word, on Tuesday night. Can it be that Kurt Schilling might be in trouble against the Cards? Well, these fans, another sellout crowd here in downtown Phoenix, certainly doesn't think so. They've seen this team get off the mat, reference game four and five of the World Series. This is just, they think, one little stumble en route to another World Series. But Tony La Russa's Cardinals have it going on all cylinders. Everybody seemed to be hitting in game number one. Fernando Vina had three hits. He leads it up. J.D. Drew the change for Marrero and right. Jimmy Edmonds, first inning home run. How much will we look back at that home run that he hit in inning number one off Randy Johnson? We'll see how far the cards go. Pujols with the two hits and the triple. Scott Rowland with the home run hitting fifth. Tino Martinez and Edgar Renneria swap in the lineup. Uh, six and seven. Mike Matheny behind the plate and 39 year old Chuck Finley hitting ninth for the St. Louis Cardinals against Kurt Schilling who had another masterful season. Kurt Schilling who is 23 and 7 this year following up a 22 and 6 regular season last year. However he stumbled his last three starts and one brief relief outing. We talked to Schilling about just finishing the season on a down note. Alfred E. Newman what me worry? People have been trying to make excuses for me for five weeks. He's tired, he's hurt, uh, you know, uh, he's tipping his pitches. Really none of that is, has, is applicable to why I'm doing bad. I'm just struggling. I'm not, I wasn't doing well. Um, I guess people have a hard time accepting the fact that sometimes he just don't do the job. Well, Seth, did you find anything in Kurt Schilling? I mean, his last three starts and then he came in relief uh, over the weekend and gave up a home run. Uh, numbers are very not Kurt Schilling, but no one's going to be automatic for a six-month span. I mean, should he be concerned? I think what happened to Kurt Schilling more than anything down the stretch was the fact, Boomer, he had an opportunity to win his first Cy Young Award. And to do that, he had to keep up with his teammate, Randy Johnson, as far as strikeouts were concerned. You mentioned after his 21st victory, he only had 21 walks. Well, in the two wins after that, you could see he had walked 12 guys during that period of time. I think he just started pressing. He wanted that Cy Young Award. I don't think he's going to get it. Some changes certainly for Arizona, most notably at first base, where Mark Grace is out and Greg Colburn is in hitting third. And Mark Little, a story we'll get into, is the new left fielder. And Damian Miller, new catcher. So three different guys in the starting eight. Yeah, three different catchers in the first three games for Bob Brimley because Rod Barajas will catch Miguel Batista. Chilling getting himself ready. Luis Gonzalez has thrown out the first pitch. An emotional first pitch for him just a couple of days out of surgery to add a little fuel to the Arizona fire. That's exactly what got this crowd going. And a terrific gesture on the part of his friend Tino Martinez applauding Gonzo. Swinging at the first pitch as we thought they might. Fernando Vina fouls it off. Vina was three for six in the first game. Jimmy Edmonds was three for four. And three other cards had two hits. So five guys in the eighth lineup had multiple hit games. And the game started by Randy Johnson. Will it continue two days later? Little chopper up the middle. That's going to be a tough play for Spivey. And the way Vina runs, no play. So, as they did in game number one, Vina aboard to start the game. He got aboard on an error in game number one, and he's ready to run again. I'm going to tell you what, the top of the first inning more than just sets the tone of a ball game. If Schilling is able to put up a zero, you, you have a big advantage. Your team gets to hit nine times. The opposing team's only going to hit eight times. You also have that last at bat. But it was Vina and then Jim Edmonds that set the tone for St. Louis in game one. 
J.D. Drew, who homered in that last game of the regular season that the Cardinals saw the Diamondbacks the Wednesday of that eight days ago, he had a three-run homer. Uh, Scott Rowland also had a three-run homer. And Drew's home run at the time put the Cardinals ahead of, or in a, in a tie-breaking method, ahead of Arizona in a tie-breaking situation for home field advantage. Arizona eventually finishing a game better than St. Louis, but Drew has homered a couple of times off Schiller. One, we should mention, was in game five here last year. The only run Kurt Schilling allowed during that divisional series and his two complete games against the Cardinals. Boomer once again, St. Louis swinging at the first pitch. What's up with that? Well, we thought they might. Drew behind 0 and 2. Miller sets up outside. Drew fouls it off. The, the only slot in the lineup. Well, actually, there were two slots. Marrero did not get a hit in game one. Tino Martinez did not get a hit in game one. Everybody else was pounding. It. Now, I do find this interesting as Tony La Russa knows he's got a club that is red hot. 22 and 4 from September 3rd on, if you include game one. Almost that venue lead. See, that, that's the big difference between. Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling both of them with a lot of strikeouts but Schilling does an outstanding job controlling the running game Cardinals were able to steal a couple of bases off of Randy Johnson in game one they're gonna have to get a great jump to steal a base off Schilling and in particular Damian Miller the catcher oh and two again Drew making them work Randy Johnson in game number one when uh, we talked with Bob Brenly we said well how often do you have a guy when Randy Johnson or Kurt Schilling's pitching how often do you call the bullpen in the fifth inning six innings the ten hits uh, his postseason high in hits allowed five earned runs and then of course uh, the bottom fell out as soon as the bullpen came in with six more Boomer, they put it in play though look at that just four strikeouts for Randy Johnson in the 30 batters that he faced in that ball game. two of them were Matt Morris the pitcher who was trying to bunt. Drew lays off and it's ball one. Bill Miller, uh, who was the first base up on that close call involving the Spivey and the fadeaway throw, if you will, on his derriere from Scott Rowland. Bill Miller is the plate umpire. Ron Mayakopa is at first. Gary Darling at second. Steve Ripley, believe it or not, is at third. Mark Hirschbeck, left field line, and the home plate umpire from game one, Bruce Freming, is in the right field line. And now we are two and two. jump around the specter of Jimmy Edmonds who has hit Kurt Schilling very well in his career who hit Randy Johnson very well about 440 feet in the first inning Tuesday night nothing doing with Vina Drew swinging through it one down focus on the part of Kurt Schilling to not only make good quality pitches to J.D. Drew but also not let Fernando Vina get a running start as far as stealing second base just a complete pitcher boomer all the way around it, it, he, he does not beat himself if you're going to beat him you have to swing the bats so Jim Edmonds up last 10 regular season games hit at 407 Game one Tuesday night, three for four, including a two-run homer and a pair of singles. To say that he is seeing the ball like a grapefruit, despite the fact that game one was Randy Johnson, would be an understatement. And again, Schilling, we already mentioned. Pretty darn impressive. And that, of course, includes the postseason numbers last year when Schilling did not allow much. Boomer, his slugging percentage of Jim Edmonds at 772 in postseason ball games, that is the highest among anybody with at least 50 postseason at bats. The guys right below him, a guy named Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Hank Aaron, Juan Gonzalez in that group as well. But Jim Edmonds above all of them. Not above that pitch. And this is something that we mentioned right at the time, and who knows, but the emotion on the Cardinal bench when he hit a two-run shot off Randy Johnson, a no-doubter in the first inning, 
We'll see if the cards come out of this series, and we'll see how far they go. But I'm telling you, if they go places, you can reference that home run every postseason game they have. Very much like Eric Davis in game one against Tony La Russa and the defending champion Oakland A's in the 1990 series against the ace Dave Stewart. He changed the series immediately. Oakland never won a game. Tony's hoping he's on the other side of that equation this time. Smile a little bit this morning in our meeting when you brought that up. He, he didn't quite say "at a boy" for bringing it up, but there was a little smile, wasn't there? You know, it was tough to get a smile out of Tony. He just flew in to Phoenix this morning. There were some personal matters. He talked to us a little bit about it, but he said, "You know what? Just just leave it at that. I want the focus on winning Game Two for our club, not me today." Very, very much uh, in tune with what is going on with his club, as you might expect. The most successful managers of all time. There is uh, Chuck Finley waiting for his opportunity. Will he have runs to work with? Well, he waited for a postseason appearance last year, 15 years between those appearances. Didn't go real well for him as a member of the Cleveland Indians. He lost game two and game five against Seattle. And he feels really fortunate to get another opportunity to come back and hopefully fi fix that here tonight. Ahead of that one is Edmonds. And Showing a lot of thinking against a guy that's had some success against him. More than, than the normal motion, huh? You know, but watch what happens with the swing. Look how they just almost stop it. That's what they did off of Randy Johnson and his slider. Well, with Kurt Schilling, it's going to be the split finger. They start the swing as if it's a fastball, and if it's an off-speed pitch, it's almost like they're stopping the swing just trying to foul it off. They were able to do that against Randy. Blows that one by Edmonds up high. Two outs, both of them caves. Well, he's got his good fastball here. That's right down the middle, basically in the same location of the pitch that, that Jim Edmonds hit a home run off of Randy Johnson in game one. Take a look at that glove right now. We'll get into that a little bit later in this ball game. That was the topic of conversation in the newspaper the last couple of days. Kurt Schilling possibly tipping his pitches. Well, something that you were uh, had noticed yourself. Well, I, we did the last game of the year here, and, and, and I saw it then when he came into relief. I saw his last start against the Cardinals, which he gave up a couple of homers doing that same thing. He starts Albert Pujols off with the strike, and nobody is better than that in this game than Schilling. And Pujols with a long triple to the right center field corner off Randy Johnson later in the game, a two-run single. And you see those type numbers for Pujols. His first two years have been eye-openers in the majors. Crowd wants it, and they get it. Ron Culper, the up at first, said, yes, you did, and so Schilling is ahead 0-2. First pitch strike from Chile. He's unbelievable. Well, really the biggest difference. We'll take a look here at the swing by Albert Pujols for strike two. The biggest difference in these two pitchers is the fact Schilling retires a leadoff man 78% of the time. Finley only 68. Crowd looking for the strikeout. Not so fast. I mean, no matter what numbers you look at with Schilling, here's one of my favorites. We did a game at the Pac Bell, his last start in May. He ended the month of May with eight walks. Eight walks for two months. Come on. Just so solid mechanically. And he ends the first inning with three strikeouts. Everybody on their feet at the bottom. They sense a different afternoon for the Diamondbacks. Heading to the bottom of the first here in the desert. No score. Steve, I don't think you should hang the bug zapper over the Bud Light. That's really tacky. Yeah. Great party. Thank you. Yeah, this dip is fantastic. Great. Mm. I love these crunchy things on top. Are they caraway seeds? Yes. <laughs> I didn't put anything in the dip. With a great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Great party, guys. Fun. Make it a Bud Light.
mozzarella, pepper jack, cheddar, and nacho cheese sauce form a taste to die for. Don't miss the new cheese extreme quesadilla. Mm, four cheeses. Four. You gotta be insane. <laughs> Wolverine DuraShocks with new compressor technology. They don't quit. Bottom of the first, the roof closed. A beautiful day, not too hot here in Phoenix, but in day games, they close it. And so it's indoor baseball on the grass here at the Bob. And Bob Brenly, speaking of the Bob, the manager, Bob, uh, has uh, this lineup with several changes, which we pointed out. Of course, Womack and Spivey at the top. Greg Colbert, who certainly hits lefties as well as anyone, hitting in the three-hole. Matt Williams hitting cleanup for only the second time all year. And Steve Finley down to the five spot. Quentin McCracken, six. Damian Miller, the new catcher. Mark Little, the left fielder. And Kurt Schilling against the 39. Nine-year-old, six-foot-six lefty from Monroe, Louisiana, Chuck Finley. Picked up his 200th career victory in his last regular season start. That's the most career wins of any active pitcher, Boomer, without a postseason victory. Chuck Finley, as you mentioned, having another chance. His first postseason start were those two you mentioned last year as a member of the Cleveland Indians. Neither did he last the fifth. Tony Womack, one for five, as you see in game number one. Trying to bunt his way on. Alert, and it was foul anyway, so it is strike one. We might as well just say this about Finley since we're talking his history. In 1986, you know how far back he goes? He pitched in the Donnie Moore game, <laughs> the game in which Dave Henderson had a home run in California, thought they were going to the World Series game five. Finley is right there for the easy comeback and flips it over to Tino Martinez. But he pitched three times in relief for the Angels in 1986 in the series with the Boston Red Sox. That is ancient history. Here's that great Cardinal defense. Huh? Well, gold gloves all the way around, particularly up the middle. You think about Vina and Renteria. I don't know of a combination in the National League that turns a double play better than they do. There was some concern, not on Tony La Russa's part, he said, but about Fernando Vina being able to play this afternoon. Remember on that base hit by David yep. Lucci, he dove for it, rolled over on that left wrist, but even if it was broke, Tony said Vina would be in there. Well, not only is he in there, I think he's got a mic on for us, so we may be able to pick up some sounds of the games, courtesy of Fernando Vina. Junior Spivey had a hit. The guy that had a multiple hit in the first game was Quentin McCracken, had a pair. Took singles off Matt Morris, but there's a single off Chuck Finley. So Spivey gets the Diamondbacks going with one out here in the bottom of the first. Boomer, they're still the world champs. I know it's not the same lineup that they had hoped to have here in the divisional series. Great counsel out. Normally counsel the second hitter where Junior Spivey is here this afternoon. Luis Gonzalez, all of the offense lost there. But this team in the last two years, Boomer, has not lost a must-win game. I think you have to consider this affair one of those. Absolutely. So Greg Colburn hitting three. That might raise a lot of eyes. He hits two a lot for Bob Brenly in the platoon. Remember, Grace was cleanup uh, in game number one, but Gracie sitting against the lefty and Colburn against Finley. He just owns left-handed pitching. And it helps his numbers. He'd be the first to tell you that he's a teammate of a left-handed pitcher named Randy Johnson. You don't have those stats yeah. up there. You get to face a lot of the other guys. Finley with a look at Spivey and tries to come in and in too much. 2-0 to Colton. That's the whole key to him. That's what Tony La Russa and Dave Duncan were telling us this morning. That's what turned him around, to be a 7-4 type pitcher as opposed to 4-11 with Cleveland earlier in the year. He was able to get his fastball in on right-handed hitters. He's going to have to do that today. Just 171 at bats all year, except you would say he's, a, he's an integral part of this ball club, although he's not one of the first seven or eight names you might mention if you're a casual fan. Well, Boomer, he, he's without cartilage in one of his knees, and the other's really banged up still. If it weren't for that, he'd be an everyday player. A 
pitch walk from Finley to Coburn. And now, as we mentioned, hitting cleanup for only the second time all year is Matt Williams. And he comes up with two on. Matty said, you know, with a kind of a little smile, the cleanup today, huh, Matt? And we kind of go back away, as you know. And he said, well, it's always good to go home, isn't it? A guy that understands the cleanup position, just not here lately. I'll tell you what, Bowman, he looks like the Matt Williams of five years ago. I mean, he's jumping around, particularly defensively, like a kid out there. There's life to his bat. Finley knows that. Off speed in there for a strike. Talking to Bob Brenly before the game with our meeting with him. He said you could just tell why is he swinging better or do I know he's swinging better the way he's he takes pitches right he's not like oh halfway around oh hopefully I didn't go around just he, he, he said you could just see it in the body language he hit over 300 for the month of September well, that means he sees the pitch coming right out of the pitcher's hand he's picking it up quick oh inside the corner and Williams didn't like it at all Finley hit 0 and 2 well He's saying a few things right now, but after he sees this replay, he's really going to say some things to, to Bill Miller, the home plate umpire. You know when the catcher pulls it back towards the corner, even Mike Matheny knew that that pitch was a ball, a lot like a couple of pitches to Greg Colburn that weren't called strikes. But now Matty's in the hole. Guarding the line is rolling at third. Finley goes away very smartly and Williams swings and misses. That's why that fastball in is so important. Even though he only throws in the upper 80s now, once you establish that in, a hitter has to get the bat started. And that's where the deception from Chuck Finley's split-fingered fastball becomes so effective. You get it started to protect that fastball in. If it's not that pitch, if it's the splitter, you're going to embarrass yourself as Matty happened to do that. So here is Steve Finley. 0 for 2 with a sack fly for his ribby in game number one. Finley healthy this year. Remember last year, even though he was in there all the time, his back was in right. You see the numbers of Finley, and he looks at strike one. He's hitting 222 on May 10th and finished up at 287. So you know he was way over 300 for the last four and a half months of the season. And more than any of these Diamondback hitters, he's had a history with Chuck Finley. I mean, even though they've been around so long, usually the other leagues, but Finley has crossed over. Eight for 19, 421. stayed in there a little bit too long. He might have been thinking that was another get over breaking ball as Chuck Finley threw for the first strike. Not only to Finley but he threw it to Matt Williams too. You think to Finley just a two pitch guy fastball split finger. That's not the case. Finley lays off at two and one and this I should say we have a two nickname at bat. Chuck Huckleberry Finley pitching to Steve Dorsal Finley. It's a, a two for the price of one. It's an afternoon game. It's a two for everything comes a little, you know, a little cheaper. Afternoon matinee prices. They almost catch Spivey napping. Renneria sneaking in. That was close. Well, you know, Junior Spivey had some base running problems in game one when he got thrown out. Base hit by Matt Williams. The throw from Albert Pujols nailed him home play because he didn't get a real good jump. Trying to get a good jump here. You know with two outs, you see the guy put the ball in play. You don't have to judge whether it's going to be caught or not. With two outs, you go. Fouled it. And it was right here. Again, they, they, you know, they, they're, getting, they're honing in on us. The, the first inning, the Tuesday night, was right over there. This was right over here, I think. I think if we have a wide strike zone, if, if we have Frank Pulley or somebody a wide <laughs> strike zone, I think they got it. They got us covered, right? I've lost some range, you could tell. I had no chance of making that play. Chopper seats behind the plate. Well, a huge at bat for a lot of reasons. For 
Chuck Finley in this situation. He he knows he did not pitch well, losing both of his starts in last year's postseason. I mean, that breathing pattern right now is not normal. He's all fired up. If he can just get out of this first inning, most of the time with a, a guy like Finley, you'll settle down and pitch four or five more good innings. But that first one is always the toughest. Finley to Finley. And this is at us too. Just above. Uh, they, they are just targeting. Do you have a bullseye on your head or something? Uh, I just you want, you want to make sure we're paying attention. We know they're listening to you. We, we know that. <laughs> we got caught with that in game one. Yeah, we did. Dennis, the merchant of Venice. We talked about Randy Johnson changing his hands as far as his windup was concerned, and Andy Bennis was kind enough to remind us of that. Big pitch here in the bottom of the first. 2-2 two -two delivery, and we'll do it again. Well, they got a lot of pitches out of Finley here. Well, they, they saw a lot of pitches all year long. They had the best on-base percentage in the National League. There's the split finger. You can just see it tumbling somewhat. Inner half of the plate. Finley just getting another piece of it. See the tumbling rotation down. 20th pitch of the inning set for Finley. To Finley. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. Full count. And now everybody going. And like this, and especially Spivey, who can move, and behind him, Colbert, who doesn't move so well. But that changes some things on certain type of base hits. You close single double type hit you might get two runs or normally you wouldn't with Colbert at first. Renneria is going to try and make sure that Spivey doesn't get a huge lead. Jaden in behind him. And it is a strike and it was almost like pause for dramatic effect. Finley smartly ran down to first, but his strikeout and the throw to first and the Diamondback strand a pair. We've played one scoreless. to do what's best for them, for their health. And one a day has helped, and still does. Especially now that I know one in three men face prostate problems. Introducing One A Day Men's Health Formula, a new way to help beat those odds. It's a complete multivitamin with 21 nutrients, plus lycopene, which Harvard studies have linked to prostate health. Sure, one in three men face prostate problems, but hopefully not one of my three. New One A Day Men's, the multivitamin with more for your health. When life throws you a tough pitch, that tests your staying power. It never hurts to have a deodorant with a little extra muscle. New Arm & Hammer Ultramax Wetness Protection plus the pure power of baking soda. Time release for long-lasting odor protection. Extra muscle for the game of life. digital images of radiographs. For the internet to be useful as a tool, it has to be fast. The faster that I can get their animal better, the faster they can move on with their lives. Charter Pipeline, are you on? Upgrade now for free to Charter Digital Cable. 1-800-800-CABLE. Some restrictions may apply. Hi, folks. Welcome to our baseball studios with Jeff Brantley. I'm Carl Ravich. The American League Division Series, both with the off day. Both the Yankees and Angels flew last night after the game in Yankee Stadium, in which we saw Joe Torre's bullpen blow up. 
Well, Mike Sosha has great confidence in all of his players. He shows it every day, and they show it back to him right here. Back-to-back -back home runs in the eighth inning puts this game away. Angels win it by a score of 8-6. to six. It'll be Yankees Angels Friday, 8 o'clock Eastern time on the ABC Family Network. A's Twins comes your way at 4 Eastern. Boomer. Well, thank you, Carl. And uh, we're back in time to see the first pitch fouled off by Scott Rowland. Scotty just, I mean, it couldn't have been a better picture, perfect first postseason game for him. Coming over from the Philadelphia Phillies in the late July, he said, yeah, well, I had to do something after I struck out. You know, always, ooh. Got in on the hands and, and got him. Well, there's a difference between being hit on the hands by a normal pitcher and then a guy like Kurt Schilling that throws in the upper 90s. This could could have a big effect on this series before it's all said and done. Barry Weinberg, the trainer for the St. Louis Cardinals, out to take a look at it, and that's that's nothing but baseball on bone right there. One thing that the Schilling doesn't do a lot of, Boomer. I mean, he's normally a fastball away guy. Might be down, might be elevated. He has control of both of those zones. Very seldom does he come in. I think that was the reason Scott Rowland was so surprised and not able to move. So that'll bring up two guys that got to know each other late in October and in November as well. Tino Martinez against Kurt Schilling. It's really got good views of each other in games. One, four, and seven of that World Series when Tino was uh, finishing up his uh, final year as a New York Yankee. Why do they keep swinging at the first pitch, Boomer? What's that all about? No. He's not going to walk you, is he? No, he's not going to walk you. As, uh, but you knew they would. I mean, it, it, you know, and part of the reason, and I'll answer part of that, not that you need me to tell you, but I asked Roland about it, and he said, look, with some guys, if we lay off some, let's get them deep into the pitch count. He said, we know that Schilling and Johnson are going 135 pitches anyway. So even if, we th even if we thought, well, let's see if we can make six or seven pitches at bat, those guys aren't going to come out when they've thrown 105 pitches. So that part of waiting goes away. Spivey had a tough play to Womack, and so they only get the front man rolling. Tino on a fielder's choice. Well, I think that's another big difference between these two clubs, Boomer. The St. Louis Cardinals would have turned that double play, particularly with the lack of speed by St. Louis's first baseman. You get set here. Look at how long it took for him to get his feet in a position, and then that's just a horrible throw there. You've got the athletic Scott Rowland bearing down on him. Womack just trying to get out of the way, but no speed whatsoever with Tino Martinez, yet they weren't able to turn it. I think Vina gets that double play executed. Well, as we see them not be able to turn it, the Diamondbacks 116 double plays this year, Rick, lowest in the National League. Well, you know, Junior Spivey's learning to play that position. We also know Tony Womack has played other positions. He's been an outfielder. He came up as a second baseman in the big leagues. Edgar Renneria up the middle. Womack dives. He flipped to Spivey in time to get Tino. So there's some defense from Womack and another fielder's choice, although that one a lot more impressive than the first one. Watch the quickness right here. Look at that ball right back up the middle. That's a base hit with one out first and third. What should have been, thought to have been, but wait a minute. Womack, we know his quickness. I mean, he's led the league in stolen bases many times. How about this effort right there on the part? Finley was charging real hard, but I'll guarantee you that would have been first and third, one out, had Womack not come up with that. And the Cardinals are saying Tony Womack again in this part. Remember, he had to hit that won the five-game series last year in the night. Mike Matheny swings and misses. What a surprise. Strike one. I thought this might be the one guy in the lineup that could walk here this afternoon. Reason being, Chuck Finley spent all of his career in the American League, not swinging the bat until this season. You don't want to let Matheny beat you with the pitcher on deck. Off speed in tight. One and one.
doing. Keeping an eye on Renteria, who of the runners, Roland, Tino Martinez, and Edgar Renteria, the one by far most likely to get something going. And, and I think that throwover came from manager Bob Brimley. We saw him flashing some signs to Damian Miller. Damian will, in turn, put down a sign to throw over to first That's base. Very ingenious sign. That bubble, the, the bubble burst, you throw it over. There goes the runner. Miller's throw. It's a good jump by Renneria. Boy, that was a fine throw. But Renneria had a nice jump on a tough tie to get a read on. He also picked the perfect pitch to run on. A real difficult ball to handle for Damian Miller. Take a look at the jump. All right, he's off and running. Not a bad jump. You know he's got good speed, but it was an off-speed pitch. A couple of things happen. One, it takes longer to get to home plate. That gives the base runner an opportunity to get closer to second. The other is the catcher has to stay back. If it's a fastball, you can kind of cheat a little bit. You know there's not going to be a lot of movement on it. But with that being the split finger, if it bounced, Damian Miller would have to block that pitch first of all. What uh, you can see why he's a gold glove type catcher year in, year out. Two steals in two games here in Arizona for Renteria, his eighth postseason steal. He had just 22 on the regular season, but you can see obviously he's been going here. Well, that's how tough it is to steal a base off this combination. You got to pick the perfect pitch to get there, and it's still close. Mastini didn't like it. He'll get to continue his conversation when he gets behind the play with home plays umpire Bill Miller. But Finley ends another inning with a K. No score. Ladyburg lives in fear of a man everyone else thinks is dead. My old boyfriend's back. He's been watching me. On October 18th, I go away from look what happens. She's the only one who can stop him. Wherever you go, I can follow. Katie Holmes. Why are you doing this? Benjamin Brad. What are you gonna do about it? Move on with my life. Abandoned. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, October 18th, everywhere. The haunting season is coming. When the pitch black night <laughs> creeps into the early evening sky. Same exact heartworm and flea medications delivered to your home, saving you time and money. It costs less than buying from my veterinarian. It only takes a phone call. I saved a visit to my vet's office. I didn't have to leave home. Pet Meds delivers my pet's medication right to my door. It's cheaper and more convenient than buying from my vet. I save time and money. 1-800-PET-MEDS. We deliver savings and convenience on HeartGuard, Advantage, Frontline, and all other pet medications. Call to order now or order online. This Craftmatic Model 2 electrically adjustable bed costs no more than many quality flat beds. And when you buy selected ones with optional heat and built-in massage, you get this fabulous bonus. A 25-inch color TV absolutely free. In a Craftmatic bed, you adjust yourself into comfortable positions automatically. Call toll-free so we can mail you our adjustable bed catalog and the certificate for a free 25-inch color TV with bed purchase. Call toll-free 1-800-706-4433. Chris Berman, Rick Sutcliffe with you here in Phoenix. At bottom of the second inning, no score between the Cards and D-backs. Game two of this National League Division Series. Sellout crowd of 49,000 plus. And uh, one, whom we'll show you in a minute, one last color on the sleeve of uh, Chuck Finley. Bruce Freming, the crew chief, was the right plate umpire, came down and talked with Chuck Finley and said, what is he telling me or said about his under garment. Well, between innings, Bob Brindley came out and talked to home plate umpire Bill Miller. He went down to the crew chief, Bruce Froming, to tell him what Brindley was complaining about. That was the two different sleeves that Chuck Finley had on when he pitched the bottom of the first inning. So as he starts McCracken off here with a ball, he, in which he had white and the blue. So he had a white shirt that was extending below that, and I guess that you can lose the baseball in that. Well, it, lo that? it looks like he still has the white shirt on. You see the cut oh, them off. up there yeah. still being white. He just he just trimmed them both up. Well, I mean, he wants to look good. I mean, he's... well, and, and, and too, there's a lot of superstitious type things. See here. See the left arm there? Doesn't look like much on this it, shot. Right? But there it is. And, and, and nobody is allowed to wear white sleeves because a lot of times the baseball will get 
caught up in the look of, of that sleeve. So sleeve gate is now figured out, resolved here in Arizona, and uh, Quentin McCracken has looked at ball two. The count is two and one. McCracken, lone diamond back with a multi-hit game, two singles. He only had uh, six singles going off Morris. I think more than anything, that's just a mind game that Bob Brinley's trying to play on Chuck Finley. Seven hits, I should say, but they, they kept them all nice and low. Diamondbacks uh, all told had the, at eight hits. What a job, and you pointed it out. Emotional, yes, but just from a baseball standpoint, the cards have their ace. He's back. And he pitched just as well in game one as he did last year in the postseason. Problem was, Kurt Schilling was a little better. Ball will find the seats off the bat of McCracken. Morris, as we spoke about in game number one, so close. He was mentor, the late Daryl Kyle. His jersey just omnipresent, his, even on the road. The full locker, the two jerseys, Tony La Russa having Kyle's red jersey in his office. Matt Morris leading everyone with the number 57 DK's number on the hat. And those hugs that we saw when he came off were more than just, hey, that's a great pitching job in game one of a postseason series. And it was late for a lot of people. They didn't see that, but it was uh, cannot be underscored. I don't think so. Yeah, there's there's normally a lot of high fives and pats on the back that, that will happen after a start like that. But uh, there was a lot of grown men that were hugging each other and a little teary eyed, you know, thinking about just how far they have come. And really, in particular, I mean, Matt Morris took it tougher than any one of the Cardinal players. Full now to McCracken. It really helped a lot as we look at Flynn Kyle with the sunglasses on. That's Barry Axelrod beside her, the, uh, a longtime friend and also the agent of Daryl Kyle. They came over for game one, talked to Matt Morris before he started that game. McCracken thought he had ball. Instead, Finley gets strike three, leadoff man gone in the second. That was the biggest problem Chuck Finley had during the regular season was retiring the leadoff man. He has done it in both of the innings here this afternoon. If he can continue that trend without Luis Gonzalez and without Craig Council, without Danny Bautista in this lineup, well, his job could be a lot easier. Here is the all-star catcher for the Diamondbacks, Damian Miller. Such a thrill for him to play, home state. All-star game in Milwaukee. Manager Bob Brenly. It shows three catchers from the all-star squad. One of them, the lacrosse Wisconsin native. Boy, it's been a tough second half of the season for him. 42 RBIs on the year. 22 of those, though, came in the first month of April. So offensively, physically, not Damian Miller at, at, at the 100% level we've seen in the past. Inside to Miller. Count is two and one. Well, you mentioned it. I mean, it's not often that you go into the postseason with your first three games starting three different catchers. Chad Moeller starting game one. He catches Johnson. We'll see Rod Barajas game three for St. Louis. Uh, in Loretta for Arizona. But Miller has his stroke back now. This is going to run all. Side and left center. And Damian Miller, maybe the least likely in this lineup with an extra base knock. Who were the crowds really excited about this double? But I, I'm a little surprised, a little disappointed at Damian Miller not thinking about a triple. There's one out. How important would that be to get there? You can see the ball getting through into the gap. And then look at Jim Edmonds not exactly playing that carom right. Let's take a look at Damian Miller here, though. All right, that's a pretty good effort right there. But look at this. All of a sudden now, what's going on here? All of a sudden he pulled up where if he continues to bear down, I think he could have gotten a third base. Especially we've seen two strange caroms in the respective corners with that little pillar out there at the respective 413 holes. His last triple, by the way, was 98, so he was figuring, eh, 
three, four Happy years. I agree. I agree 100% with you. I was surprised, too. I just couldn't believe he pulled up there as he rounded the bag. You, you pull up when you see the throw headed in. This is a reclamation project, and uh, it's been a project that's been well-received here in Arizona. Mark Little began the year's Rockies. was with the Mets two months ago, designated for assignment, playing in Triple A Norfolk in August. Uh, pitcher P.J. Bevis sent to, to the Mets organization for Mark Little. Here he is starting in game two in left field. Who would have known Luis Gonzalez would be hurt? You know, had Damian Miller been able to get to third base, that would have changed the whole complexion mm -hmm. of this inning. Now I would imagine you intentionally walk Miller to get to the pitcher spot. You know, with Schilling on the mound, runs are going to be hard to come by. Even if you get Schilling out, Tony Womack would have gotten the hit in this inning. Womack had the single that won game five against the Cardinals a year ago. Little will sit. Two strikeouts this inning for Finley. That's four thus far. And now here is Kurt Schilling. Uh, the biggest reason that Mark Little's in the lineup is because of his defense. Uh, with a mm -hmm. fly ball type pitcher like Kurt Schilling, you want the best possible defensive outfield you can put out there. That was the reason he was in the lineup today. You would have liked to have had David DeLucci's type bat in there, but you sacrifice one thing for the other. Here's the good news with Kurt Schilling at the plate. His 15 hits this year were the most he's ever had in a season. You know, the bad news is that he's a career hitter below uh, 174. It's about as good as he's going to do. He's a career hitter in the 140s. Let's see if he hits the ball or tries to hit the ball back up the middle. Well, almost. But Vina is there, takes his time to Tino Martinez. Miller stranded with the double, and we've played two. What a surprise. Kurt Schilling and the Cardinals in a scoreless game in the postseason. usually ask me what I use, and I tell him. You know, I use Scott's Winterizer. He really cares. When you apply it in the fall, the food actually enters the root system. It stores it over the winter, and then in the spring, it perks that grass right up. It explodes, basically. Obviously, it's a critical step. He's tried other products, too. It just didn't work out. Scott's Winterizer gives me the last green lawn in the fall and the first green lawn in the spring. Driving down the road, I spot a dead emu. Having just lost my girlfriend, I decided it might look nice mounted in my pool room. However, it quickly becomes apparent that he's not dead. Not at all. I was a touch worried. Until I awoke in a pool hall frequented by a local sorority. And I ask you, was this coincidence or part of something bigger? Think this is your typical ATV? It's not. Say goodbye to bolt-on accessories and milk crates. A pin is all you need on Articat's new MRP. In the blink of an eye, set up an MRP to work Monday through Friday. Then go hunting on Saturday. And fishing or camping on Sunday. It's that easy. Mix and match. The combinations are endless. Arctic Cat. More ways to use your ATV. Coverage of the divisional round of the baseball playoffs continues this year on ABC Family. Glad you could be with us. Chris Berman, Rick Sutcliffe, here in the home of the champs, the Arizona Diamondbacks, and nobody a bigger champ than this guy on the mound, Kurt Schilling. 23 wins this season. Co-MVP of the postseason in the World Series last year with Randy Johnson. 
pitching twice in that series on three days rest to go one four seven the first guy to do that in the World Series since another guy who was outstanding in postseason Jack Morris he did that of course for the 91 twins in that stellar seven game series so one four seven I mean that's old time baseball you just don't see it anymore. Schilling did that. Now he pitches against Chuck Finley, who, whose at bats have been minimal throughout his career, only a little interleague uh, until this year. I mean, it just has not had the opportunity to swing the bat in a big strike zone, and you wouldn't be surprised that here's 0 2. Didn't get him to bite. I'll tell you what, though, I got to go back to Kurt Schilling pitching games 1, 4, and 7 on less than normal rest. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of guys in the last 20 years that have tried that. Big name guys with not near the success he had. Finley waves at that and he's gone. One, two, three, four, five K's thus far for Schilling was right behind Randy Johnson in the strikeout race of course and I mean, look at that. Six starts. Of course, four and seven. He did not get a decision. Game one and five against St. Louis. Game three against Atlanta. All complete game victories, we should point out. And then game one, where they had the lead and, and took them out uh, in a big, big lead after seven innings uh, in, against the Yankees. And then game four, Bob Brunley second guess by a lot of folks. He thought it was the right move. Some of the rest of us thought it was the right move. Schilling pitched tremendous. He also... Uh, that seventh game until the Soriano hit the home runs. I mean, the ERA just over one in six postseason outings. Unreal. We may not see many come close to that. I don't care how many years we play. Fernando Vina hitting this well to center. Steve Finley has to go back a lot longer than he had planned right at the edge of the track, but he makes the catch for two outs. Hey, what he makes things happen, doesn't he? Not really your conventional type leadoff hitter that that works the count, that that draws a lot of base on balls, but he just finds a way to make things happen. And there were a lot of the Cardinal players that were predicted before this series started that Fernando Vina would have a big one. J.D. Drew struck out of the first inning, but fouling many a pitch back. There's a good at bat. Chilling gets the better of it. Look at the adjustment he's made though. Two off speed pitches to both the first two hitters the second time around. Kurt Schilling is not only talented, but he's smarter than most pitchers on the mound. He sees what you're trying to do, and even though his game plan was to throw a first pitch fastball for a strike, he said, you know, if you're going to swing at, I can do something else. Take a look at the last pitch he threw to Chuck Finley. And, and this, watch the glove and the movement on that glove. See how it kind of just opens up a little bit? That's normally what happens when a pitcher goes in to get a split-fingered fastball. Your fingers go around the sides of the baseball, and the glove will occasionally open up. There's the splitter right there. You take a look at it. I mean, if, if this is what happens in the glove. All right, you get your fingers around it, and to do that, you have to kind of fan the mm -hmm. glove. Well, when you go to the fastball, the glove can collapse, and that's what we saw Kurt Schilling do in the last couple of weeks of the season. Some of the hitters were able to pick that up. It looks like he's trying to fix that now. See how the gloves open? Look at it. very little movement in that glove. Another foul ball by J.D. Drew, one-time bonus baby who would not sign, therefore didn't get any bonus from the Philadelphia Phillies. And about the poor Phillies, here. man. You look at J.D. Drew and you look at Scott Rowland and Kurt Schilling. <laughs> Those are Phillies guys. Yeah, they well, are. No wonder they struggled this year. Drew the other way. Mark Little going back. It's back, back, back. And it's gone. J.D. Drew, for the second time in eight days, has hit a homer off Kurt Schilling. For the second time in postseason, has hit a homer off Kurt Schilling. And it's 1-0 Cardinals. Boomer, he's been banged up all year long, but when he's healthy, he is that type of player. 
last Tuesday in a big game. He had a home run off Matt Manti. Take a look at this pitch. I mean, that is paint on the outside corner, down and away. You're supposed to be okay. Take a look at the glove movement there. See how it fans open a little bit. All right, that means that he, he's got that fixed. J.D. Drew did not know what was coming there. He had no idea. He is just that talented. It was in game five, the only run Kurt Schilling allowed in that series last year against the Cardinal. It was by a home run from J.D. Drew. I mean, you know, J.D. Drew is a nice hitter, but we're not talking about Barry Bonds here. For him to have the success against a pitcher who has pitched the last two years, or really his career, but the last two years, like Kurt Schilling, is, is, is an eye opener. There's nothing but certainly I mean, a crowd quieter. Yeah. I mean, two years here. It's not like, okay, I had a good at bat a couple of games against him. It's, uh, that's a pretty tough guy to own. I mean, I, I, I don't care who you are. This this lineup of St. Louis is going to score runs. They, they are that good. The scary. Bob Stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. The pool. Well, every ballpark has its. You know, Fenway has the green monster. Wrigley has the ivy. Well, how nice would it be we to have, go out there and hang in that pool? Well, uh, you can see the, the Swami that took a venture out there yesterday to make his picks, figuring I, I've been underwater the last couple of weeks, frankly, that I, I thought I might get some vibes there and see if the waves were riding a little differently. Was there a bathing suit involved? No, I wouldn't. Have a I, I wouldn't drop that on America. I don't think they need to see me uh, belly flop into any pool. Well, you didn't have a coat and tie on, did you? No, I have my as Tony Womack uh, quickly behind 0 and 2 to Chuck Finley. Womack reaches out, coming on as Jimmy Edmonds makes it look so easy out there, and there is one. I know I have my Tommy Bahama shirt and those shorts, hoping to very Joe Namath-like guarantee. You said that. that at one time you said that in a former life you might have been Tommy Bahama. <laughs> I huh? think I think <laughs> I at least wear his shirt. Yeah. I, I, uh, yes, I'm. I'm <laughs> I tell I you think what, I they, was Tommy Bahama. They have a good time in this ballpark, don't they? I mean, how many smiles do you see here in Phoenix now that they have built this beautiful facility for their team? They smile because they got a pretty darn good ball club as a junior spy. I think you can rent the pool for a group when you get your own. Session stand out there. This keg, and you get the pool. And, but you can tell the importance of this game. They're all standing, leaning over the top. There are very few in the pool now that there's action. Ivy may give them some action, but JD drew alert and coming on. So the ball's hanging a little bit, and a couple of fly ball outs. Baseball continues tonight. It's only a National League night, so the Giants did some hitting in Atlanta against Glavin. Try their hand against Kevin Millwood. It's a game with Fox. Our friend Tommy Brenneman was here the other night. Right? Tommy has the call on this. And then it's all American League tomorrow. ABC family will have the A's and Twins. You'll be going up there to join. We'll be there. Dave O'Brien and Tony Gwynn at 4 Eastern, one on the 3 Central, one on the West Coast. And then Yankees Angels, ABC family from Anaheim with John and Joe from the Big E. How about those Angels? I, I will say this. All right, we've had six games thus far in the postseason. Nobody had to use up their number one starter to clinch a playoff berth the last game of the year. My point is, against starters number one and two, we have not had a pitcher's duel yet. There have been a couple of good pitching performances. Morris here in game one, Mark Agent Boulder yesterday for Oakland. But 12 runs, eight runs, six runs, nine runs. I mean, hard to explain. I, as soon as you, Joaquin Andujar is right. You can sum up baseball with one word. You never know. To me, the most amazing thing is, is how the runs have been scored, Boomer. You don't hit home runs off great pitches. I mean, you get runs from time to time, but you just don't hit that many home runs in the postseason as they already have this year. Right, just the number, the, the total of the runs. I mean, I think back to this series alone, Arizona-St. Louis. Nothing, 2-1. And it was grabbed, and so Greg Colburn is gone. A very impressive inning, pitching with the lead for Chuck Finley. One, two, three. Speaking of the pool, pool holes coming up. When life throws you a tough pitch, that tests your staying power. 
It never hurts to have a deodorant with a little extra muscle. New Arm & Hammer Ultramax Wetness Protection plus the pure power of baking soda. Time release for long-lasting odor protection. Extra muscle for the game of life. I have three boys. I've always tried to do what's best for them, for their health. And one a day has helped. It still does. Especially now that I know one in three men face prostate problems. Introducing One A Day Men's Health Formula, a new way to help beat those odds. It's a complete multivitamin with 21 nutrients, plus lycopene, which Harvard studies have linked to prostate health. Sure, one in three men face prostate problems, but hopefully not one of my three. New One A Day Men's, the multivitamin with more for your health. Share your day. Share your laughs. Share more time together with the whole family this fall with Verizon Wireless. Sign up now on the America's Choice National Family Share Plan and get unlimited nights and weekends to share on up to four separate lines. Hurry in and get extra anytime mobile-to-mobile -mobile minutes. And buy one Kia Sera phone for $49.99 and get a second free. So now there's no limit to how much you can share with all your loved ones. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. You can hear me now. Charter Pipeline puts me in touch with veterinarians anywhere in the world. It's our sick little chief back there. I'm not just a vet, I'm a pet owner as well. I take my work home with me every day. I'm sending big files, ultrasound images, digital images of radiographs. For the internet to be useful as a tool, it has to be fast. The faster that I can get their animal better, the faster they can move on with their lives. Charter Pipeline, are you on? Upgrade now for free to Charter Digital Cable. 1-800-800-CABLE. Some restrictions may apply. So often, injured people call our firm upset at how they're being treated by their insurance company or an employer. That frustration often comes from them not knowing their rights. Hi, I'm Patrick Yon, one of the partners at the law firm of Chapman, Byerholt & Yon. We're representing injured people as our business. Give us a call at 1-866-HELP-500 and let our experience and knowledge work for you. J.D. Drew's home run, the reason the Cards lead 1-0 top of the fourth, and now the cleanup hitter, Albert Winnie the Pujols, the step up against Kurt Schilling. So what do the Cardinal batters know? Do they know anything? Well, we think we got something again. He, he's made a little bit of an adjustment as far as throwing out the windup is concerned, but he's repeating something as, as he's throwing his pitches. This is not only is it a, is it a veteran ball club in St. Louis, but it's a veteran coaching staff. Mm -hmm. Dave McKay, Tony Larusa, Dave Duncan, as good as they get at picking little things up. Steve Finley will squeeze this, and Pujols is gone. Let's take a look at it right now, Boomer. We're going to break it down. We mentioned it a, a, a couple of weeks ago. We thought we saw something with Kurt Schilling. Watch the glove on the left right now. See if there's any movement whatsoever as he takes off. None, right? The glove doesn't move. Watch the one on the right. Take a look at this now. Watch what happened. What happened? Look at how it fans out. Well, why does it fan? All right, take a look at from the backside. Watch what he does. See the splitter? See him go to the fastball and fan the glove? When the glove went out, J.D. Drew might have known a fastball was coming. But now look, uh, and that is ripped by Scott Rowland through the hole on the right side. So Scott, a hit by pitch and a single is aboard both times. All right, let me ask you this. That's not a huge glove mover you just showed. I'm not saying that the batter can pick that up. That, he's just looking at the glove. Seriously, that's not a huge movement. I'm the batter. I'm looking at a lot of things. I'm ready. Right here, Boomer. Just a little flip right like that. You can see this that on a black can, glove. You know what? If Chris Schilling only does it 90% of the time, I don't want to know. All right. I don't want I don't want to guess wrong. I don't want to look fastball and get a breaking right. ball. But if he's doing that 100 percent of the time, that's the only chance you've got to get a hit off a guy that throws 98 at the knees. He's got a breaking ball. He's got a split. That's why coaches are so important. And that's why Tony La Russa has spent so long with the same coaching staff he had. They help you win ball games. Tino Martinez up against Kurt Schilling. You're wondering, okay, Tino. Fielder's choice in the first inning in the World Series last year faced Schilling eight times, one for eight with an RBI single. And I, we're going to be going back to that World Series for the next forever. I mean, that'll be one of those reference points when baseball is discussed. Tino and Schilling certainly in the middle. What we were interesting to see in this postseason is if Tino Martinez will have a, an at bat against Byung Young Kim. They have not seen each other since the ninth inning. 
um, game before. You know, I love what the, the Cardinals were talking about in the clubhouse. You, you think they'd be happy, all right? They, 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 they got a victory off Randy Johnson, but they weren't. I mean, they, they weren't thinking, okay, we got our win. Now we're, we're, you know, we know it's going back home. We can win it there. They want this ball game today even more, it seems like, than they wanted the first one. And you know Randy Johnson wants an opportunity to get back out on that mound. Tino hits it to right center field. Hangs up there for Steve Finley. Rolling two-thirds of the way to second. Now scoots back to first. There's two out. Hey, what Tino doesn't have a whole lot to show for his at-bats here. In just the first couple of games, but he has been real close to doing some damage. Lined out a couple of times in game one. You think about the, the, the base hit and the stolen base by Renneria standing on second in that fourth inning with nobody out. Sure, it was just a ground ball to second, but it moved the runner to third. He eventually scored. Pitch to Edgar Renneria is ball one. As we outlined for you on Tuesday night, talk about recent postseason heroes of which the guy on the mound certainly is one Kurt Schilling Edgar Renteria certainly no stranger to the spotlight and successful spotlight in October to Hopper to Womack over to Spivey rolling retired and so are the Cardinals We're headed to the bottom of the fourth here in Arizona one nothing St. Louis you're watching the MLB divisional playoffs on ABC family more polluted than air outside that indoor pollutants like dander can aggravate allergies and trigger asthma what can you do get the filtreat ultra allergen reduction filter it's up to 30 times better than all other one inch filters at capturing airborne dust bacteria and pollen and it meets health house guidelines if you don't take care of the air in your home who will filtreat filters from 3m for his reunion party, his old tux still fit, but his old dander shampoo wasn't tough enough for black. So I bought a maximum strength Selsun Blue. It's doctor recommended and works fast. Hey man, you're looking great. Never wear black without the blue. Selsun Blue. Just because a toothbrush is electric doesn't mean it works like a Sonicare. It has patented Sonic technology. Sonicare gets your teeth whiter and healthier in just 28 days, guaranteed. See for yourself or ask your dental professional about the Sonicare difference. of all white chicken breast with a kick of spicy buffalo flavor baked through and through. Ten pieces for $5.99. You're the chicken man! Get the door and get a kick out of dinner tonight. Now get an order of Cinestix free when you buy a large one-topping pizza for $9.99. Cardinals lead the D-backs 1-0 on J.D. Drew's home run, and thus far, shutout pitching from midseason acquisition Chuck Finley. The 39-year-old lefty says he knows exactly when he's on his game. I know when I'm throwing well and it feels well is when it feels like somebody's just sucking the ball out of my hand. I don't even feel it leave my hand. It just feels like somebody's just taking it and pulling it away from me. And it's effortless. That's when you know the timing, the landing, your positioning, your arm angle. Everything is at a perfect point. Thus far, it looks pretty fluid to us, Sut. And what he's talking about is that split-fingered fastball that he's gotten most of his strikeouts on here this afternoon. It just comes out clean. It's, it's not dragging. There's not anything that's keeping that ball from having the rotation he needs to get the strikeouts on that pitch in the dirt. Finley begins the fourth inning with Matt Williams, two guys that have been around since the 80s, yet two guys who who hardly know each other, certainly uh, in the regular season. They know each other from 
spring training at bats all those years with the Angels Giants, and most those particularly at Angels Diamond. Those don't really count. Well, I understand that. That's my point. I asked Matty about him, and uh, he said, I, you know, I only hit against him a few times. That ball just, as Chuck said, being sucked out of his hand. That's a little two seam fastball, the outer half, trying to get a ground ball. Williams, though, times this one, sends it way back in center field. Back, 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 back. But not far enough. He picked the deepest part of the yard, deeper than straight center, right at the 413 sign, and Jim Edmonds just breaks their hearts here in Arizona, doesn't he? You know, and it's amazing to me how Jim Edmonds knew right off the bat he had a play on this ball. Everybody in the ballpark thought it was gone, including Chuck Finley, including Matt William. But Jim Edmonds knew. Look at him back there. He's like, oh, my goodness. Got away with one. Great shot, guys. And only because that was the part of the ballpark that the ball was hit. That ball is out anywhere else. And maybe out if the roof is open. Maybe. We'll never know. This one almost hits the roof. Steve Finley skies it in our double nickname uh, at bat. And Vini uh, makes the play, and they're two gone. You know, we're told that this roof being open or closed has a lot to do with how the baseball carries. Now, I was told before the game the reason the roof was closed today, not so much the heat, I mean, it's a beautiful day outside, is the fact that the shadows that are created when it's open makes it real difficult for outfielders and also for guys to hit. Well, although, uh, you know, postseason baseball should have the shadows. That's part of baseball lore. I'm not saying it's wrong to have it closed. It just. Well, this thing with, with the roof it has there creates even more than normal shadows on that baseball field. And it's tough to hit what, what you can't see. I tell you what else it does, because I talked to Steve Finley about him a bit, uh, about roof open, closed for a center fielder. He said, "I do you lose it in the roof? He goes, absolutely the other way. I lose it in this in the sun because it comes in in some odd angles. So for center field, I would much rather have the roof closed. Yeah, oftentimes if you lose it, you lose it like the Homer Dome and things like that. We've seen a lot of putouts made by the center fielders in this game, getting good visions and good jumps. See, it's just some some rays of sunlight coming in through some of the airport hangar type windows that they have way out in left center and right center. That's the only shadows we have here are, are for the left fielder to deal with. The rest of the ballpark is, is clean. That's a reverse shadow because that's the sun coming in. Center fielders have been very, very busy. Finley and Edmonds have been busy. Edmonds making two of the putouts. Another one, two, three inning for Chuck Finley. from the Major League Baseball Clubhouse Store. The Major League Baseball Clubhouse Store presents Bobblehead Fever. Bobbles are the hottest collectible, and you can get all your favorite players right now. Bonds, Schilling, Sosa, Ichiro, Giambi, Rodriguez, and more. Call toll-free 866-MLB-2002 to add these bobbles to your collection for only $19.95 each. 866-MLB-2002. Call now. Inside all of us are like a billion verbs. Just waiting to get into action. The ones you choose are up to you. For more information, there's verbnow.com to get your parents' permission before going online. Verb, it's what you do. 
Experience the latest in fall fashions at Chelsea's from holiday casual to classic styles with a modern attitude. Chelsea's Ladies Apparel lets you make a fashion statement. Complete your total look with beautiful accessories from Brighton. Chelsea's is known for its personal service such as customer notification of new in-store merchandise. And guys, Chelsea's even has customer sizes and preferences on file so you can give the perfect gift for all occasions. A gift from Chelsea's. Two locations on Woodruff Road and Trade Street, downtown Greer. Top of the fifth inning here in Arizona. The Diamondbacks almost tied it on a long blast by Matt Williams, but between innings, here's Chuck Finley, who's never pitched in this park, sudden his center fielder Jimmy Edmonds, and is Finn saying, Boy, you know, I, I, I could like it here, giving up a shot like that to center, and it's not even close. To well, out. I think they're probably laughing at, at how many times Chuck Finley has sent Jim Edmonds to the warning track and beyond to run down mistakes that he has made. I should say that as a member of the Indians, and Schilling starts Matheny off with a strike, no surprise. Finley did pitch against this ball club once. He was with Cleveland. Arizona beat him 4-2 in Jacobs Field in late June. That's really the reference point that these batters have against Chuck Finley. None else. Spivey squeezes it. Mike Matheny is gone. Chuck Finley is real close to getting done exactly what Tony La Russa wanted this afternoon. And that's five, maybe six good solid innings. Give us a lead and an opportunity to hand it over to that bullpen. He feels like they've got a huge advantage down there as good as they've been this year. Here is Finley at the plate. And that advantage started to come out back in game one. They just flat blew it open in the seventh inning with all of those runs off the Arizona bullpen. One and one to Finley. Over 94 this year and uh, you know, in his uh, career not a lot of at bats. <laughs> and it shows. Yeah, well, and sometimes you can't hide it. Well, you know, we, we, we've 53 at bats coming into the uh, coming into this game. We lifetime talked about players when they change leagues, how it's difficult to, to, to adjust to the league and the new pitchers. Well, it's a guy that not only adjusted to a new league, but uh, having a piece of wood in his hand. Well, and still in his hand as he goes back to the bench. So striker number six now for Kurt Schilling. And oh, it's college football on Thursday on ESPN. Clemson and Florida State. Oh, you know, Bobby Bowden has those Seminoles want to come back from that Thursday debacle in the rain at Louisville. That'll be at 7.30 on Thursday night. Illinois, Minnesota. ESPN 2 at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 out west, 7 central for that game. Main game, Clemson and Florida State. Coming on Thursday night. Fernando Vina, a little ahead of that one. One hopper off the bullpen, uh, off the dugout. He doesn't care what it is, does Vina? I mean, if it's somewhere where he can put a bat on it, he, he's going to take a swing at it. I remember Mark McGuire saying that, that Vina's always been a, a pain in the rear. That's just the way he described mm -hmm. it. He said, well, now he's our pain. Right, oh. right. He continues to be a pain to the Diamondbacks as Vina goes the other way for a base hit. So Fernando, who had three hits in game one, now has two hits in game two. Five already in a game and a half. Well, and look at what he's done. Now, because of his speed, Kurt Schilling has to somewhat respect that. I don't look to see Vina going anywhere, though, because of the guy standing at home plate and the success lately J.D. Drew has had against Schilling and Arizona. Get fooled by those numbers at 250 average. He was hurt all year long, basically. Word into the left field seats for the lone run in this game in the third inning. Struck out in the first. Did Drew? I think that's a legitimate concern that the, the Cardinals have with JD, though. They know he's talented. I mean, he's got power, he can fly, all of the tools are there, but is he going to be able to stay healthy or not? One just foul and wide of Colburn at first. 
Well, he's had a couple of the bats, one where he fouled off a bunch and then Cade and then fouled off a bunch and then deposited it into the seats in left for the lone run of the game. Did you see what a short stroke that was? Yeah. Though? I mean, that wasn't a long swing, just a quick little take the knob of the of, of the bat to the baseball and how far it went. Burn ruining your morning. The new Extreme 3 from Schick balances three blades on a central pivot for a close, comfortable shave. The Extreme 3. Get close, not burned. Garrick's farewell speech. Selfless. Robinson's rookie year. Fearless. Fisk's game winner. Timeless. Time. The new home run champion of all time. Priceless. And if Henry there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Devoted fan of Major League Baseball and its most memorable moments. Tonight, you become a man. They're young. To our fathers, we're nothing but Aaron boys. They're hungry. Who has the money? And they've got something to prove. You just tell me where I can find a little trouble in this town. Yeah, he'll do. They're the new mob generation. Consider yourself a tough guy. Barry Pepper, Vin Diesel, Seth Green, with Dennis Hopper and John Malkovich. Showtime. Knock around, guys. Rated R starts Friday, October 11th. The haunting season is coming when the pitch black night creeps into the early evening sky and the evil winds shriek through the graveyard. For it's time for the 13 nights of Halloween. The hauntings begin October 19th on ABC Family. as the world champ Arizona Diamondbacks. Nothing doing yet against Chuck Finley. Here we go to the bottom of the fifth and the bottom of the order. Damian Miller, Mark Little, and Kurt Schilling. Chris Berman, Rick Sutcliffe with you. Glad you could join us for game two of this uh, series between the D-backs and the St. Louis Cardinals. Miller's double, and you just saw that, that he hit in the second inning. The last hit allowed by Chuck Finley, just two today. Single by Spivey in the first, a double by Miller here in the second. And, you know, they, they weren't sure. You know, Finley, you mentioned his record with Cleveland, which was 4-11, and 11, and you figure, well, we're just hoping. With everything that happened, and not only the, the tragedy with Darrell Kyle, but with the, the injuries up and down the line of, of the St. Louis pitchers and really not knowing who they were going to use. 26 pitchers employed by the Cardinals this year. And, uh, although, Turner Lewis is telling us that the scouts on Phyllis he still has a lot of arm. Even though he's been this year. And there's the general manager, Walt Jockety, who, talk about guys that make moves at critical times, has he not pulled the strings pretty well every year for the cards and with Oakland and places before? All started with Mark McGuire. And yep. He was able to get Mac. That is the life that they were talking about still left in Chuck Finley's arm. That's what Walt Jockety noticed. You got a 3-1 count, the leadoff hitter, he knows he's gonna get a fastball, and he just threw it right by Damian Miller on that pitch. He's been rewarded for that fate with his seven and four mark here with St. Louis. And Miller is a walk, and the problem for Arizona, he lawed the Cardinals with Finley, 
is you pointed it out. Tino Martinez may have had the hit of this series, and it happened last week, and we don't mean it as a joke at all. This foul, this ball down the line in St. Louis, and Luis Gonzalez separating his shoulder. The most dangerous hitter in this lineup by Gone. far one of the most dangerous hitters in all of baseball just a year ago 57 homers for Gonzo he was pitched different this year but where do they find the production they need it you said that they, they're not sure you had Mark Grace didn't clean up the first game and he, he, he didn't even know he'd be playing hardly at all of this postseason a month ago well here's what has to happen right now Bob Brindley has got to take some chances you can't just sit back and wait on the home to come they're, they're, they're going to be few and far between what do you do when you're a manager by taking chances you pick the right spot to hit and run this could be it here 1 0 count to Mark Little starting in left in place of Gonzo behind that one and we told you before that Luis Gonzalez threw out the first pitch just a couple days after that surgery successful we understand and uh, there it is, a big ovation of Chris Donalds who made the squeeze there behind the plate. And Gonzo here at the park in Uni. Not in Uni, but certainly you saw the Diamondbacks jacket. Hoping maybe he can help his team subliminally to, uh, to get some runs. And he's back in the dugout on cue. He's hoping to... That's such an awful feeling. I mean, he, he, he can't do anything about it. Anything. His teammate is such an integral part of the season. And what a season he had last year. And you feel helpless. You know, and things are only going to get worse for Arizona. The world champs have to go on the road after the game this afternoon. And they were a completely different ball club on the road, not hitting near as much. And you take Luis Gonzalez's 300 average on the road away, well, it gets even worse. Not to mention the scene that we're going to see in St. Louis. That, that's unbelievable. Uh, is there anyone that goes to the park without red? No. Unless the Cubs Do they make them down. go back to like a souvenir? <laughs> you can come in, sir or madam, but please would you buy something red first? Oh, now you're welcome. Now, that's great. That, that scene in St. Louis and the scene we're going to see in Minnesota starting tomorrow are tremendous. You know, I, and, and I'm, I'm so happy for the, the Cardinal fans. They have, they've had tears in their eyes almost all year long. They're finally going to get an opportunity to go to the ballpark and scream. You saw that in that series midweek against Arizona last week. It was as if they were themselves getting ready for the postseason. The fans. 2-2 two, two to Little. And that'll be fun. One other footnote on that is that Tino Martinez and Luis Gonzalez have been friends since they were five years old. They both went to Jefferson High School in Tampa. By the way, the same high school that Tony La Russa. Tony predates them a little bit. Um, and Tino felt almost as bad. I just can't believe it's him. All I hit. And when he threw the first pitch out, who was standing there doing his laps? Nobody was clapping louder yep. than, than his buddy Tino. strikeout of Little and there is one down. We talked to Tino Martinez about exactly that. He was getting ready to play against his longtime friend Luis Gonzalez. Now he's not. I'm disappointed. You know, I know that he's disappointed and frustrated. It's a terrible thing that happened. Uh, I'm just as frustrated as he is. You know, uh, uh, having been in the postseason the last few years, uh, when you lead your team and you play hard all year long, like he does, uh, you have a great year, you get your team back to the postseason. The last thing you want is an injury, uh, especially the last week of the season that you can't recover from and, and, put, and help your team out of the postseason. So I, I know what he feels like just sitting on the bench. Uh, it's going to be frustrating for him, but um, like he said, it's part of baseball, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, you know, he'll get strong, come back next year, and have another great year. You know, we, we talked to Gonzo the last day of the year on our ESPN game and, and, and asked him, you know, if he would have done things any different. And he said, I don't know how. I don't know how not to play hard. I had a chance to catch that ball. I, I went for it. And you know what? That's 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 the way the ball bounces, unfortunately, sometimes. For 
Robert Schilling squared, pulled it away. Now tries to drop it down. Look at Matheny like a cat. And can they turn to almost? Wow, you saw gold glove quality catching from Matheny right there. All the way around. You, you saw it from Renteria as well. I, I'm a little bit surprised just a sacrifice bunt attempted there. That would have been the second out of the inning, even though you had a runner in scoring position. I mean, hits are going to be hard to come by. I, I kind of look for a hit and run there or, you know, just get the runner in motion, maybe try to create a first and third situation. They weren't able to do that. Almost ended the inning with that terrific effort on the part of both Matheny and Renteria. So two outs, Schilling at first, Tony Womack up. one nothing St. Louis, bottom of the fifth here in Arizona. Everyone knows what's at stake. And the Cardinals come in here and beat Randy Johnson and Kirk Schilling and possibly go to St. Louis up to nothing. The only time that Schilling and Johnson were beaten back-to-back -back turns in the rotation happened late August when the San Francisco Giants beat it. It's only happened once this year. Can the Cards do it as well? That, that's, that's your plot right there, son. And when the two of them start, the record of the team, 55-15, and 15, not including last night. The rest of the staff... When they start, six below 500. So now you're St. Louis, and you have a chance to beat those two guys? I think they'll take their chances. But we have a long way to go here. Foul ball. Well, that, that, that long way to go, though, is, is, is getting shorter. They're, they are down to 13 outs right now in this ball game. They've got to make something happen offensively. Offensively is this man's homer in the third. J.D. Drew. one nothing. Schilling beat Matt Morris in game one here last year. Now he's staring at a one nothing deficit a year later in game two against Finley. That'll be fun. How about the job that Finley has done? I mean, they really don't know. Woody Williams, would he be healthy? Probably would have been game two starter. Yes? No question about that. But the reason Chuck Finley has gotten it turned around, watch the split finger fastball. Watch the movement on that. Look at Matheny all over it. He had already hit the ground to keep that ball in front of him. There is a lot of life left in that arm of Chuck Finley. And you know what? I mean, he's just, he feels like a kid again getting this opportunity. by Matheny. Well, you know, you didn't get the sacrifice bunt down, but if Matheny doesn't do that, you would have had the runner in scoring position. So much confidence by both of these pitchers here this afternoon in their catchers. Two and two, the count to Womack with two out. Understand that Kurt Schilling is not going to be Ricky Henderson running on three, two, and two outs. However, he will be moving. And who knows how that'll play if Womack just gets a bleeder going. You better hit it out of the ballpark if you're going to try to score him here. I didn't say score him. I'll tell you this, he's going to get a good pitch to hit because the one guy that really concerns Finley this afternoon is Junior Spivey, and he's on deck. But we're not going first to third at this moment, but Arizona all of a sudden with a little bit going for the first time since the first inning. With a couple on board, and here comes Smiley. What's the difference in this ball game right now? Well, all of a sudden, it's not J.D. Drew and the home run that he hit. It's the terrific defensive play made by Mike Matheny. When he came up with the bunt that was put down by Kurt Schilling and threw out Damian Miller at second base, that kept that base hit from Tony Womack from possibly driving in a run. Spivey, single to first, did single to left in the first, flew out to left in the third.
Strike one for Finley. It just shows you how well Chuck Finley has pitched as of late. The confidence Tony La Russa showing in him now, leaving him out there. You're back to the heart of the lineup. You know, you say he's only one out away from possibly getting a win, but there are a lot of guys that might have gone to the bullpen in this situation. As strong as that bullpen for St. Louis is. Will change by what he has more than most pitchers. And this time I got these pitches working. He'll go with that. He says it's, it's a. You better change something up here yep. because Junior Spivey is getting a real good look at it. And Roland playing pretty close to the line. Sees that one go foul past him. We talked about it before the series began, Boomer, you and I, the defense of St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Talk about Morris, talk about their offense, all of that should be said, but they, it's amazing that, that there is good defensively along with all of the things on the offensive side of the game they can do. They may win five gold gloves, this team of the Cardinals, and there's Roland's position, you can see. In again to Spivey. He's just being too fine with that fastball in. That's what sets everything up for his split finger. Tony Arusa telling you and I that that was really the only change that Dave Duncan made in Chuck Finley. You got to throw that fastball in more and have the confidence to throw it for a strike to set up your split finger fastball. You got to get that hitter's bat started soon. Breaking ball perfectly positioned is Roland and they go to Vina. The crowd thought that the speedy Womack had beaten it out, but not to be. And so defense by St. Louis, airtight. We've played five. It's one nothing. to have a deodorant with a little extra muscle. New Arm & Hammer Ultramax Wetness Protection plus the pure power of baking soda. Time release for long-lasting odor protection. Extra muscle for the game of life. Have you thought about changing your long-distance company? I'm always calling my family back home. So I switched to AT&T for their new unlimited plan. But the stuff you read, you want a company you can still trust. And look, AT&T's always been there, always reliable. I decided to switch back to AT&T, and they were really good about finding the right plan for me. They even switched me for free. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT today and switch to AT&T. Whether you want a low rate per minute, no monthly fee, or the freedom of unlimited long distance, AT&T has exactly what you need. Even great local service. AT&T also gave me an international plan and hassle-free internet access. Hey, I'm there. There's absolutely no risk. If you're not completely satisfied, we'll switch you back for free. That's why I switched back. There's never been a better time to sign up for AT&T. Because what you want is right here, right now. So call 1-800-PICK-ATT today. Change my long distance company. Nah, not now. Not ever. I've got AT&T. The heat is on when mozzarella, pepper jack, cheddar, and nacho cheese sauce form a taste to die for. Don't miss the new cheese extreme quesadilla. Mm, four cheeses. Four. You gotta be insane. One nothing. The scantest of margins. The lead for the St. Louis Cardinals. As Jimmy Edmonds steps in against Kurt Schilling. And Edmonds, the Diamondbacks know full well. Homered in both games last year in St. Louis. Off Batista in game three. Off what's it all about? Alvy Lopez in game number four. And then a home run that just may in the first inning of this series have changed the tide for good. We'll see. Two run shot off Randy Johnson on Tuesday night. Edmonds, Pujols, Roland. 
three, four, five. Stepping to the plate against Kurt Schilling. And here's something that you alluded to before, Suck. <laughs> Those aren't just names that he's on top of. Those are the largest of names. And you know what? You, I look at all of that. Think about what else he does defensively. He's one of those five guys that could win Gold Glove. Vina, Renneria, Roland, Matheny, and Jim Edmonds in center. Not to slight Tino at first. I mean, it, you go around, it, there's, there's not. It's pretty airtight. I, I think the whole key, too, to the club this year has been Renteria. And that, before it's all said and done, might be the difference between them just getting to the postseason and maybe even winning it all. He, he, he's just become a big-time special player. We've heard his name before. He's done some things, but he's going to do a lot more. Pitch on Edmonds as it's one and two. I just love the approach, though, that the Cardinals have taken in the first two games of this series. You mentioned to begin with Boomer, they're going to swing at that first pitch if they like it. They're, they're going up there and just taking three big hacks. And if you run into something, well, good for you. I mean, in, in most situations, that's good for a lead. Thus far this afternoon for Kurt Schilling, the starter in the All-Star game this year, among his many accolades that he piled up the last two years. Ripped, but right at Colburn. And Edmund saw it well, but he's retired for the third time this afternoon. One out. Well, the, 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 the line looked a lot like that five innings, only four hits, one run allowed. Take a look at this bullet hit by Jim Edmonds, but nothing to show for it. Down to the knee. Took a knee. That, that line, you know what that line looked like to me? The line for Schilling here this afternoon? The same line in game one last year for Matt Morris. Yep. There was a loss tagged along with that. So here is Albert Pujols. Look out there. And of course, what Pujols has done, the first guy ever to begin his career. 30 homers, 100 ribbies, 300 batting average, first two years. I have you know, and, and Walt Jock did he telling us yesterday that he's really a big part of the reason they could go out and get Scott Rowland. He's not even arbitration eligible yet. That for Albert Pujols. You know that once he gets to that point, his salary is going to go way up. But right now, just two years in the league, the Cardinals can pretty much dictate what he makes. And because of that, they had some financial freedom to bring in a terrific player like Rowland. Do you think that bringing in Finley and Roland might have helped him out a little bit, Sut? I'm, I'm being facetious. No question. Oh, my goodness. Talk about two moves. You, know, you know, just seeing Walt, I just want to get this in before we forget. He asked me for a favor. His son, Joey, is 12 today. Okay. So watching the game at home. Happy birthday, Joey. I'll try to do that. You know who else deserves some credit for this Cardinal team? And Walt was the first one to tell us. Mark McGuire still. Colburn in makes the catch. Who holds gone here in the sixth? What Walt Jockety meant by Mark McGuire, and nobody knows Big Mac better than Tony LaRusa does. Big Mac walked away from a lot of money, Boomer. Not many people would have done that. But by him leaving that money with the Cardinals, they were able to sign Tino Martinez to replace him at first, and also Jason Isringhausen, a problem that they have had with the closer in that position. And that's all because of Big Mac wanting to do even more for St. Louis. Get themselves a heck of a chance here as Roland on board all three times. Two singles to go with a hit by pitch, not to mention the homer hit in game number one. So Scott continuing to rock and rolling with a base hit with two outs. Let's look at the approach that he's got. Look at the intensity in those eyes. Wasn't a great pitch. A little get over breaking ball from Schilling. But Scott Rowland not trying to do too much with it. So Mr. Baseball from Jasper, Indiana. I just, you know what, he not only plays well, Boomer, but more equally important, he plays. 155 games this year for Scott Rowland. Old-time guy. 
Tino Martinez trying to get something going. Hits this to the deep part of the park. Steve Finley. Center fielders have been busy, and Finns is there to make it. Roland stranded at first. Can Arizona get Schilling a run to work with? Coming back to the bottom of the six. Body pain? Oh. Back pain? Now relief is just a shuffle away. <laughs> Introducing new Bear Extra Strength Back and Body. It soothes aching muscles and sore backs with the trusted strength of Bear Aspirin to work effectively at the site of pain, plus a special pain relief enhancer. Nothing works better than Bear Back and Body. Not Advil, not Tylenol. Get moving again, pain free. New Bear Back and Body. <laughs> Alias's Jennifer Garner is everywhere. She has been in dozens of magazines and even won a Golden Globe. As Sydney Bristow, she's a top secret undercover master of disguise, government agent who's so cool. Do me a favor, darling. TV Guide needs three separate covers just to cover her. Freeze. There's never been a better time to leap into the adventure. Alias, Sunday at 9, 8 central, followed by The Practice on ABC. Have you thought about changing your long-distance company? I'm always calling my family back home, so I switched to AT&T for their new unlimited plan. The Voice. The Soul. Provider. The Passion. And the incredible concert event. Michael Bolton. World Tour 2002. Friday. October 11th at Pepsi Pavilion at the Bilo Center. Get reserved seats August 24th at Bilo Center. Ticketmaster by phone or online for a night with Michael Bolton. The Swiffer Wet Jet Power Mop with Jet Action Sprayer gives your floor a better clean. Here's how it works. You simply spray, mop, and toss. Watch. The Wet Jet Pad absorbs three times more dirt and liquid, locking it deep inside. That's because only wet jet pads feature a super absorbent lockaway core. And they have these unique cleaning cups that sweep up dirt and hair. To get your Swiffer wet jet, go to a store near you and look for the purple box. For a limited time, call the toll-free number for a $5 off coupon to get your Swiffer wet jet for only $19.99. BC family, we get ready for the 13 nights of Halloween. Beginning October 19th. 13 nights of creepy movies, scary places of earth tears, and the extreme illusions of Chris Angel's mind freak. Ah! Ah! 13 nights of Halloween begin October 19th on ABC Family. <laughs> Bella Lugosi, Lon Chaney with you here for the bottom of the sixth inning. You, uh, you got your costume picked out, partner, for Halloween? Yeah, Tommy Bahama. I, 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 <laughs> same costume as every other day when I'm not on the air trying to look good for you. That casual, relaxed look. Absolutely. Aloha. Well, you wanted a pitcher's duel, partner. You wondered yep. where they were during this postseason. We You're looking at a good one. We ask they deliver six games without a pitcher's duel to start the playoffs around the four series. We got one right here. Well, and, and, and right here is a huge at bat for the Diamondbacks. Greg Coleman's in the lineup for one reason today. That's to hit. He's walked and struck out. Six strikeouts for Chuck Finley, who, by the way, this year moved up 10 spots on the all-time strikeout list. He's got 2,610 for his career. He is now 19th. He passed Christy Mathewson, Don Drysdale, Jack Morris, Mark Langston, Jim Cott, Sudden Sam McDowell, Jerry Kuzman, old-timer Tim Keith, Rapid Robert Feller, and Warren Spahn. Now, you know, that's a pretty good list right there. He's now fifth all-time for lefty, having uh, passed Spahn. So you wouldn't think of him as Mr. Strikeout, but he's done that. Here's a long run for Edmonds back there, but he has the room to retire Greg Colbrin. Gives us a chance to say in a normal voice that this copyrighted telecast presented by authority the office of the commissioner of baseball may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. What did you decide? What's the most memorable moment of Major League Baseball history? Watch game four of the World Series to find out. Don't miss it. I'm anxious to see that too. 
good buddy Cal was leading for a long time. I, I, I think I remember reading. Certainly is a candidate. Here's Matt Williams. Well, it seems like another life. You know, Will Clark got the pub in that 89 series with that a bat against Mitch Williams on your cup. Matty had a pretty important at bat in one of those games out of Candlestick, did he? It's another life. But you know, all the postseason series. Why you gotta go there? So you might remember it. I'm sitting here ringless, you know. It was hard to like Matt Williams for a long time, but uh, Mark Grace and I eventually got over it. That's another life for me. Came out the shortstop. He could always sting one, though. It was a home baby for Roger Craig. Everyone sitting in our studio today, Jeff Brantley remembers it. Teammates, look at how Finley's setting these at bats up, though. With that fastball in, even when he's not throwing it for a strike, it's having a big effect as far as the hitter's approaches. He comes back after that pitch with something off speed and down, and that's where most of the strikeouts have come from. That's, you know, that's Dave Duncan once again, taking a, a veteran pitcher who a lot of people thought were done and, and getting more out of them. Storm Davis, Scott Sanderson, Bob Welch. Mike. Oh, the list goes on and on. I mean, you start with Daryl Kyle. People say, okay, well, it was Colorado, you know, he got out of there. Well, yeah, that's what we're getting out, but he became a 20 game winner under Dave Duncan. How about Woody Williams last year? Under 500, yet maybe the, the, the best pitcher down the stretch for anybody. Woody was the winner in game two here last year of this series. 2 2 pitch. Williams is struck out. So there are two outs here in the sixth. Boomer all set up by that fastball in. That was the only adjustment Duncan made with Finley. You got to show the fastball in so that when you do throw the splitter, they have sped up the bat, they start their swing, and they can't hold up. Remember Bob Brinley telling us before the game how even on the check swing, Matt Williams was doing a better job of it. The reason for that, he was picking the baseball up out of the pitcher's hand. Well, they're just not able to see that with Chuck Finley today. So two down, the base is clear, and Steve Finley. Finley versus Finley. When I look out there, and I, I look at the pitcher and the center fielder, talk about other lives. Chuck Finley, Jim Edwards, together with the Angels, the California Angels. Steve Finley, Kurt Schilling, together as nobody remembers, Baltimore Orioles and Houston Astros. And then here we are in 2002, pitcher, center fielder. Again, a little looper that Vigna can't quite come up with. Well, he gave it his all, but Finley aboard with just a fourth safety for Arizona. Oh, what a tremendous effort on the part of Fernando Vina. This is that spark that he gives every club he's ever played for. That's not his fault. That's his mom and dad's fault. If he's another inch taller, <laughs> he makes that play. Don't don't blame him oh, for that. Man, look at the desire. Look at the passion there. Well, you might blame his mom and dad for for not being tall enough, but give him credit for raising a guy with that type of work ethic and enthusiasm. As Vina playing heard you mentioned it. The play that he made on uh, or tried to make on Tuesday night, but hey, it's really affected his swing today, hasn't it? He's yeah, only oh, two yeah. for three. Yeah, he's just a beasting for him. <laughs> and of course, he, uh, as Quentin McCracken steps up, Vina, Pac 10 batting champ at Arizona State in 1990. Quentin McCracken had two hits in game one. We're going to get something going somewhere. I think it's going to be in the Cardinal bullpen is what's going to get going somewhere. It's about that time. Finley spot due up in the top of the seventh. Tony La Russa hoping he can get there. He needs one more out here in the bottom of the sixth. Ninety-five pitches for Finley, so it's, that's not an issue. I think it is. I, 
I, do you? Yeah, I really do. I, I mean, Chuck is, is tremendously well conditioned. Fans not happy with that borderline high strike. Fall for strike one on Bill Miller. You know, as a hitter, though, that, I mean, Quentin McCracken's taking a long time right now. I, you don't want to do that. You're just going to make the umpire even matter. That's strike one. You still got two big ones left. If he calls that pitch for strike three, sure, give, give him his money's worth. Looks like another fastball in. No? Deciding to step off. I would be real careful. He's, he's had a lot of success with that fastball in thus far this afternoon. But I don't know that this is a situation for that. Not a whole lot of power for McCracken. Really, the only way he can hurt you with an extra base hit is something on the inner half of the plate. I'd stay down and away. Try to get you a ground ball to Fernando. Misses two and one. And look at that velocity. We've seen it at 90, 91 today. Now it's 88. We're at 90. Six pitches. Uh, if you could check his his heart rate right now, that'd be Antonio La Russa. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit higher uh, than it's been all day. Another number as Finley. Two one to McCracken. Now two and two. So Chuck Finley, who is last, where is the St. Louis pen now? Up and rattling around as you suggested. No, they're not up. They're watching. So yeah, but. You see the coats off. Yeah. You see that. You see Fusero's jackets off. Uh, Jason Samatachi. I don't think he he's real worried. He, it's past his his call. Yeah. It's past. Yeah. Right. They're gonna, as he told us yesterday, they're gonna keep him back just in case Andy Bennis has some more back problems. Mm -hmm. Who's scheduled to start game mm -hmm. three? Sutcliffe with you here in Arizona. Very quiet. Bank one ballpark. Nine outs separate the Cardinals from a 2-0 lead over the home fans defending world champion Arizona Diamondbacks. It's just a 1-0 Cardinal lead as we hit the seventh with 7-8-9 batting for St. Louis. Renteria, Matheny, Finley perhaps. And Kurt Schilling behind 2-0 Schilling has allowed one run and just five hits. But the problem is that Chuck Finley has allowed no runs on four hits. Womack spins, fire, gets ready to reel. So there's one out, and there's Finley with the jacket on. He has pitched as well. Let's remind everyone that his two postseason starts last year with Cleveland didn't even get out of the fifth inning. But it's a totally different storyline today. Well, and the main reason is because of the lack of base on balls. What a terrific outing. You saw the line there for Chuck Finley. I've, I've got a feeling it's going to end up being that exact same way. The off-use Steve Klein, lefty up and firing. As Mike Matheny plunks in a base hit to left field in front of Mark Little. So now, look at this now. It's a bunt. So take off the jacket, big guy, and you're going to bunt and pitch. Well, you have to do it that way because when you look at the bench of Tony La Russa, and we talked about it in game one, Boomer, because of the deadline on August 31st and, and the, 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 the split double hitter they played in Chicago, he had to have more pitchers. Well, he's got a lot of pitchers right now. He only has five extra guys on that bench. He only has one left-handed pinch hitter that you'd probably throw up against a right-handed throwing Kurt Schilling. So what do you do? Save that position player in a close game like this. Tell Finley, go up there, get the bunt down. I still haven't decided whether you're going to pitch the bottom of the seventh or not. Finley bunts it to first. And the look by Colbert, and he makes the play. 
So Matheny running. Coburn wasn't quite sure. He didn't go immediately, but boy, he put a lot of mustard on the throw. And so now Finley's on the base pass, which is not what they want. Boomer, there's another thing that would have happened. If you had the depth in the bench that Bob Brindley has, you pinch run for your slow running catcher. That was a decent enough bunt to get the job done. But Matheny, he doesn't run well. He's a catcher. You're not supposed to. He gets there as quick as he can. He tries to keep the double play from being turned. But if you had a deeper bench, you would put speed out there. That would have been a sacrifice bunt. Finley would have gotten his job done. Finley on first and Fernando Vina looks at strike one. Vina two for three. Three hits in game one. He has been fruit of the Vina. He tries to bunt. He's yelling at a hitting. Problem is, everyone's yelling at it hit him because he was nowhere near the batter's box when it hit him. I mean, well, he was almost in fair territory, is what it looked like to me, and that's what Bill Miller's explaining to him. It also looked to me like he tried to bunt at that pitch. He did. can do right now is state his case and try to get the home plate umpire Bill Miller to get some help. All right. Just just ask somebody. Maybe you didn't see it correctly. Try to get somebody else's opinion. That's the only way you're going to get a change. We're a young umpire. Alden that play at first base yesterday. Spivey was See, they just asked third base umpire Steve Ripley if he thought he attempted to bunt at it, and Ripley said he did. So the count will be 0-2 now. Vina getting a little heated, and they don't need this. That, I mean, forget everything else. They do not need this. Well, they, they, that's what you get with Fernando Vina. That's that fire that he has always had as a player. He knows how important it is for him to get on. He knows that J.D. Drew is the only offense that's been here this afternoon. He's on the on-deck circle. Well, he, Fernando, he was close. I, Miller had a, a longer fuse there. I mean, I don't know what was said. The tobacco came flying. Look at him coming out there. See, he's out of the box. He was actually even on home plate as he attempted to bunt. Watch his bat here. What's he trying to do? He's trying to push it at it. That is definitely an attempted bunt at that ball, regardless of whether it hit him or not. So it goes as strike two, correctly so. And now Vina swinging, and he says, okay, I'll take matters into my own hands. Pass the diving Cobran, and check this out. The big fellow all the way to third base. Oh, so, uh, so that was the ploy. I'll get Vina so fired up that he's just going to hit a dart. about Chuck Finley going first that's, to third That's here. what I say. I mean, uh, he, he's, we don't even know if he's going to hit. Now he, he doesn't get the sacrifice, but Chuck just motoring. And, 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 and you know, in the back of Bob Brindley's mind, he's going, Mark Grace would have made that play. Had I gone with my best defensive infield, he didn't. There's Finley coming all the way around. Now we mentioned he, he has not hit before. He's been in the American League. He's not run the bases. With all the pitches he's thrown today and going from first to third, I, I would be real concerned about letting him start the bottom of the seventh inning if this score remains the same. That's a good move by, by Kurt Schilling. Now. He, he, his shoe wasn't untied. That's an old Don Drysdale trick he taught me. When things aren't going right and, and you need to stop a rally, you need to get back on track, step off and untie your shoe and retie. Clear your mind a little bit. Here's J.D. Drew, whose homer is the reason the Cardinals lead at 1 0. Homered in the third. Finley, the runner at third. Vina, the runner at first. Two out, top seven. Do you feel that pain in the rear that McGuire was talking about with yes. Fernando Vina? Absolutely. Kurt Schilling feels, feels it right now. Six for 10 pain in the rear. The Diamondbacks. 2-0 to J.D. Drew with Jim Edmonds on deck. I 
activity in Arizona's bullpen. Mike Myers, Young Young Kim up and throwing. Kind of surprising, just 89 pitches from Kurt Schilling. Until something happens, if something were to happen. I'll tell you what's happening here. JD Drew's getting pitched around to get to Jim Edmonds. Well, that's what it was. So Drew walks, bases loaded. Jim Edmonds homered in the first game, 0 for 3 against Schilling this afternoon, and he has a chance. To change the complexion, as he may have done in his first at bat in the series Tuesday, to change the complexion of this game and ultimately the series. Right here. I like this move on the part of Chuck Niffin, the pitching coach. Come on out, give Kurt all the time he possibly needs. Boomer, it, it won't end the series with a victory here today by St. Louis, but you know what? It, 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 it almost will. Absolutely. 55 and 15 when these two guys start games. Tony La Russa would have taken Kurt Schilling and Randy Johnson out of the picture because they will not be involved in game three. He could win it without seeing them again if he could win this ball game today. You see, Tony La Russa was there talking with Dave Duncan about what to do with Chuck Finley. All right, you know, we sent him up there to bunt, but I'm not. I really don't want him to pitch the bottom of the seventh inning. I, I've got a lot of confidence in my bullpen. I got a great start out of him today. I would turn it over to those guys that have been able to handle that the rest of the year. Well, the decision might be made a lot easier whichever way he wants to go, depending on what Edmonds does right here. Absolutely. Hitting a two or three spot with an extra base hit and go ahead, let him, let him throw. And another thing he's thinking, he could send Finley out there to warm up and still not have him pitch to a hitter. Billings got a pitch to Edmonds right here with the crowd in with bases loaded. Up top for a ball. That's how I got him the last time. High fastball, inner half of the plate. Edmonds popped it up to left field. Now the last time he threw him an off-speed pitch. Remember the line drive that knocked Colburn to his knees? I'd look for those fastballs up probably on the outer half of the plate. And for that one, we want him on. And Edmonds has got to be a little bit mad at himself there. That, that was the exact same pitch he saw on the first pitch. Is that a ball? Yes. See the glove go up. That would have been ball two, and it would have been a huge advantage for Edmonds. Now with the count even, the crowd getting more and more into it, I think you're going to see more and more velocity. Sixteen regular season strikeouts. Six today. Well, would number three twenty-three be huge? But a lot of those strikeouts came early in the ball game. Three in the first inning. Hadn't been a strikeout in a while without the exception of the pitcher. But he gets one right here. Kurt 
Schilling has stranded the base as we head to the seventh inning stretch, and he's suddenly live Arizona. The Cardinals won, the Diamondbacks nothing. When life throws you a tough pitch, that tests your staying power. It never hurts to have a deodorant with a little extra muscle. New Arm & Hammer Ultramax Wetness Protection plus the pure power of baking soda. Time release for long-lasting odor protection. Extra muscle for the game of life. Your friend is dead. Katie Burke is the only one who believes her old boyfriend is still alive. He's back. He's been watching. Because she's the only one Katie. he's after. I go away from what happens. Katie Holmes. Wherever you go, I can follow. Benjamin Bratt. Why are you doing this? What are you going to do about it? Move on with my life. Abandoned. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, October 18th everywhere. Introducing the Cheese Extreme Quesadilla. Mixing mozzarella, pepper jack, cheddar, and nacho cheese sauce for the taste to die for. Don't miss the new Cheese Extreme Quesadilla. Mm, so good. Makes you want to be... bad? For his reunion party, his old tux still fit, but his old dandruff shampoo couldn't handle black, so I bought him Selsun Blue Moisturizing Shampoo. Doctor recommended with aloe moisturizers for healthy hair and scalp. Hey, man, you're looking great. Never wear black without the blue. Selsun Blue. Dindy ice. Arctic chill. Uh, An even colder dentine ice gum. Cool, cool breath. Fresh, fresh breath like dindy never dindy before. Ice. Dentine Ice Arctic Chill. Ice at its coldest. If you want the benefits of refinancing, you have no choice but to stress over a long application, right? Wrong. AmeriQuest Mortgage gives you a choice and a personal loan advisor to handle just about everything. With two decades of experience, AmeriQuest knows how to offer you the no-stress home loan. The time is right, so call AmeriQuest now at 1-800-273-9106 or go to youaremore.com. Call AmeriQuest, the company that knows you are more. right there the split finger fastball down in the zone paints the outside corner occasionally there's another splitter but all of these strikeouts were set up with a fastball at some point in that count on the inner half of the plate he's just been tremendous today i just wonder how much longer tony la is going to go with him well, he's going with him right here is finley has pitched well certainly no more important game in his baseball career that goes back to 19 to the mid 80s with the California Angels and the Chile talking about what how long we go well we're talking about the fact that Kurtz drew a third here at the bottom of the seventh and Bob Brindley is running out of outs Chuck Finley a rookie with the 1986 California Angels that were bested in that memorable seven game postseason ALCS by the Boston Red Sox. Pitched in three games in that ALCS. 
He waited 15 years to start twice for Cleveland last year. Didn't last the fifth. But boy, as he waited for this moment, as he works to Damian Miller, the seven hitter, to lead off the set. I'm kind of surprised Klein wasn't in here to face Damian Miller. He's been on a couple of times. He hit a triple that he turned into a double. First at bat, walked the last at bat, which was the only leadoff hitter today for Arizona to reach base. The opposing bullpen, Byung Young Kim. You might see his first postseason action. Well, he certainly got that huge ovation, boy, when they came back. Remember that last year? Oh, and you've got two right-handed hitters due up in the top of the eighth for St. Louis, that being Pujols and Roland. You go to your right-handed reliever. Two and two to Miller. Double. Walked. Out of that fastball, isn't it? We have seen a lot of them here today by Chuck. Just 88 miles an hour. That You get a little bit concerned there, though. I mean, there, there's not a lot of power in the lineup for Arizona, but you start to lose a little velocity, they can get you. You know, Miller seems to be the only one, really, that, that picks up the rotation on that splitter. Maybe the fact that he catches one with Kurt Schilling throwing helps him pick it up out of the hand of, of the opposing pitcher. Everybody else has chased that pitch in the dirt, with the exception of Dan. It hard, but short hop by Vina over to Tino Martinez. There's one out in the Arizona seventh. Chilling, at least for now, in the on deck circle. You know, and, and, and too, bro, there aren't a lot of options for Bob Brinley on that bench like he had last year. Because of all of the injuries, I mean, the only right handed pitch hitters he has are, are two other catchers, Rod Barajas and also Chad Moeller. Now, Barry Weinberg, trainer, manager Tony LaRusso, and home plate umpire. Bill Miller on the mound. You know what it is? It's a blister. And, and it's the same blister that came up for Chuck Finley in his last start after six innings. You get a lot of friction with that baseball coming out of your hand when you spread your fingers to throw the pitch that he's had so much success with. It's like a wrist there, though. What could that be? Well, from throwing that splitter. I understand. Just on that last pitch. This is what we're talking about here, but we'll take a look at the splitter. This was the last pitch that he threw, kind of grimacing a little bit. See the rotation, the mm -hmm. tumbling there. All right, that's what happened. I mean, just if you think about it, you take your fingers and you get them as far as you can around the baseball. Take a look at it right there. I mean, that's not even comfortable to look at. And he even gets more than that. He's thrown almost 100 of them. That's going to be it. Well, the pitches that he's thrown have been marvelous, but it looks like that will be it for Finley, who stands to win his first postseason game. Steve Klein coming on. Alias's Jennifer Garner is everywhere. She has been in dozens of magazines and even won a Golden Globe. As Sydney Bristow, she's a top secret undercover master of disguise, government agent who's so cool. Do me a favor, darling. TV Guide needs three separate covers just to cover her. Please. There's never been a better time to leap into the adventure. Alias, Sunday at 9, 8 central, followed by The Practice on ABC. In a world of superhumans, fierce battles have raged and many have fallen. Now the best remain, but only one can wear the ring. Who will lead his team to victory? Will it be Bonds, Chipper, Gloss, Giambi, Hunter, or Johnson? Watch the Major League Baseball postseason on ABC Family. The world will be watching. Will Inside all of us are like a billion verbs, just waiting to get into action.
ones you choose are up to you. For more information, there's VerbNow.com to get your parents' permission before going online. Verb, it's what you do. Every year, mental and physical illnesses force thousands of people in South Carolina to apply for Social Security disability benefits. And every year, the government makes it harder to prove you're disabled. If you file for Social Security disability benefits and been turned down, don't get discouraged. Call me. I'm Will Dunn, and helping disabled people is my business. Social Security disability claims call Will Dunn in Greenville, 242-1303, or toll-free in North and South Carolina at 1-800-273-DUNN. Faces of those front and center. Yeah, baby. Yeah, and if you're a Cardinal fan, you're toasting a little bit thus far, but a one-nothing game now with one out on the bottom of the seventh. Steve Klein, the lefty, has come on to face Mark Little and giving it a look, but out of play. Tino Martinez watches it go into the seats. Now, a well-rested Steve Klein. Why? <laughs> well, he only pitched 66 games this year. The year before, he pitched 89. The year before, he pitched 83. The year before, he pitched 82. All those years leading the National League in appearances. So, Klein, a little bit of time on the DL, but as live an October arm as he's had. And here is the trainer, Barry Weinberg, with Chuck Finley. Blood from the slide at third, working on the hand. And what a job he did. I mean, it, for him to step up as number two starter and have a lead over Kirk Schilling in an absolute must win for the Diamondbacks. For Finley to come up this large, wow. And playing in that sun, that little blink of sun is rolling. It across getting Mark Little. I guarantee you, he threw that ball harder to first base than Steve Klein threw it to home plate. In between hop, look at the sun. Everything that could possibly go against you is. See the ball there with the in between hop? Nothing you can do except turn into a catcher. Sacrifice your body. Look at where the baseball lands. Go get it and then flat air it out. Nobody can do it better than Scott Roll. Look at that sun that he's got to stand. Schilling, who unless the pinch hitter Chad Moore can get something going, Schilling can stand only to lose, not to win, unless Arizona gets some two-out magic right here. It looked just a couple of seconds ago, Boomer. Look at him trying to stretch. You know, I, I don't know so much as I think it's a cramp. I think with all the right. split fingers he threw, I think his hand just started cramping up on him. You look at the knee there. That was from, as you said, Boomer, the slide in the third base. Let's not forget, I mean, he had to change shirts, too. His little good luck white shirt was taken away from him before the bottom of the second. Moore does his job. One of those three catches we spoke about for Bob Brenly. First pitch hitting off Klein into center field. Tough, tough decision for Bob Brindley to make. Yeah. You, you, you're down to seven outs, and you need a run. You have to do something offensively. You know that if you can get somebody on last year, Tony Womack had one of the biggest hits of the season for Arizona against this pitcher, Steve Klein. That was a game-winning hit in game five. Just the fifth hit for the Diamondbacks this afternoon. And here comes Mr. Womack. Just at the edge of the grass, at third. In case Womack tries to tiptoe one down the line. You see him in, and a good thing for him is he's out of the sun. The big fellow down in the pen is Rick White, another one of the less heralded. Mid to late season moves by Walt Jockety and his staff. Yeah, but when you see him up late in the game with a lead, that tells you how well he's pitched, how much confidence his manager has in him. It's 
It's a pitch on the outside corner, two and one to Womack. And see, I like that about Tony there. Oh, borderline pitch, the fans didn't like it. You know what, it's just strike one. It'll be it. You know, there, there's still a lot left in this at bat. Don't give the umpire anything to be mad about. See? And you get a borderline call. Mm -hmm. If you would have upset him, I mean, he might have raised that right arm again. He did, and he got back in the box. Now he's going to get a pretty good pitch to hit. Only five homers on the year for Womack. Most of them will come with a count like this where he knows what's coming. He might cheat a little bit, try to pull this ball. He didn't need to cheat. The pinch hit for Schilling is now produced runners at second and first. Moeller with catcher speed, a little bit better than the average catcher speed, but said now we're not going to worry about that because pinch runner in for Moeller with he now representing the tying run. It's going to be Alex Absolute Cintron going in to run at second base. Dave Duncan will go out and talk. Junior Spivey is to the plate. The righty White's going to come in. The wheels are turning here in the bottom of the seventh. Share your day. Share your laughs. Share more time together with the whole family this fall with Verizon Wireless. Sign up now on the America's Choice National Family Share Plan and get unlimited nights and weekends to share on up to four separate lines. Hurry in and get extra anytime mobile-to-mobile -mobile minutes. And buy one Kia Cera phone for $49.99 and get a second free. So now there's no limit to how much you can share with all your loved ones. Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. You can hear me now. Good. On your knees. There you go. Excellent. Square your hips. That's good. All right. Back in position. There you go. Active feet. Active feet. Like a ballet dancer. There you go. Good. That's the winner. This is the one thing. And this is the one thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. With a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. Thing's got some zip on it. Oh. Driving down the road, I spot a dead emu. Having just lost my girlfriend, I decided it might look nice mounted in my pool room. However, it quickly becomes apparent that he's not dead. Not at all. I was a touch worried. Until I awoke in a pool hall frequented by a local sorority. And I ask you, was this coincidence or part of something bigger? Next time you're on the road and you need to fill your tank, here's something to consider. New Shell gasoline is specially formulated to help prevent deposit buildup in your engine, which helps keep it clean. And a clean engine performs better, which is why when they're looking for more from their gasoline, so many drivers choose Shell. On an all-new bank borrowing deal, while Team Kobe tries to score in the Motor City. All this for one task. Team Contact makes a pit stop in Richmond. We are definitely going to hit up NASCAR. Bank borrowing deal, the new series from ESPN, Tuesday at 8. Rick White, the big right-hander, began the year in Colorado, and boy, did he make an impact here in St. Louis. 20 outings for Tony La Russa, 22 innings allowed, only two earned runs, and the, it was almost automatic down the stretch, son. Well, you know, another guy it reminds me of got out of Colorado and had a lot of success for these Cardinals. That was Daryl Kyle. The same thing has happened to Rick. He's gotten over here, and the difference has been his fastball in. He can locate that fastball with anybody in baseball right now. He's got an outstanding slider to complement that. However, interesting that he faces Junior Spivey with two on now, and Spivey three for five off of him lifetime. One of those numbers that much, but three for five is an eye opener. Well, to quote Jackson Brown, when you see the lights and you hear the crowd, you remember why you came. One nothing, bottom of the seventh. Inside is Spivey, ball one. Pinch runner Alex Cintron at second. Tony Womack at first. Both can move, certainly will be, with two outs, with anything going 
from Spivey against White. Number three for five. I mean, that could be anything, but one of those three was a home run. just run themselves out of the inning. So pinch runner Alex Cintron literally runs themselves out of an inning. We played seven. One nothing card. You're watching the MLB Divisional Playoffs on ABC Family. Body pain? Oh. Back pain now relief is just a shuffle away uh -huh. introducing new bear extra strength back and body it soothes aching muscles and sore backs with the trusted strength of bear aspirin to work effectively at the site of pain plus a special pain relief enhancer nothing works better than bear back and body not advil not tylenol get moving again pain free new bear back and body welcome to the annual espn the magazine sports mascot picnic Every year, pro and college mascots come from all over the country to swap stories, compare dance steps, nice moves, Billy, and talk about how much they love ESPN the magazine and show off the free police pullover we give to every new ESPN the magazine subscriber. You know more mascots subscribe to ESPN the magazine than any other sports magazine in the world? Hey, here's the college guys. Fellas, who's your ESPN the magazine favorite? They're so into Dick Vitale. Call now for ESPN the magazine. Sports the way it ought to be. Bigger, bolder, with previews, predictions, inside information, and attitude you can only get from ESPN. Every new subscriber gets this ESPN the magazine fleece pullover absolutely free. These high quality fleece pullovers are extra large and roomy. Fits all shapes and sizes from devils to penguins. And the new charcoal gray color looks good on anyone. 
even if your skin tone skews slightly blue or orange. Subscribe now. Get 26 issues one year for just a dollar an issue. That's 71% off the newsstand price. Hey, if you're a sports mascot or simply a regular human who loves sports, pick up the phone and call for ESPN the magazine and your free fleece pullover. 1-888-ESPN-MAG. Back at Stun Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix. As the Diamondbacks had something going, but because of runner interference, the rally quelled. Their star pitcher Schilling out. Cintron getting some words to the wise of Robin Yount, and he's been hearing an earful. That, that, that was bonehead. I, I don't know any other way to describe it. I was just explaining. All you had to do was angle out and go around the fielder. The new pitcher is Mike Koplov, and I got a question. Does Koplov have a dog? Because you remember Koplov's dog, don't you? No, I don't. Yeah. No, that was Pavlov. Never mind. Spivey makes the play over to Colburn. And Pujols gone. Well, let's take a look at that play one more time. Obviously, the play of the game. Look at here. Scott Rowland's nowhere in sight on that ground ball. You're not going to get Tony Womack at second base. You're probably, look where Junior Spivey. All right, look at that. Look at the collision. He's hustling down the line. Look at him fly down there. I don't think Rowland would have even had a chance to make a play at first base. We know that Rowland got hit in his wrist earlier in the game. That had to hurt. And now, all of a sudden, it's either his, his hand or maybe his shoulder. I mean, that was quite a collision there. I think Roland was probably the most surprised that somebody ran into him because he knew he, he had a tough play in front of him. Well, he's going in the clubhouse, and Eli Marrero is batting for him right here. So they've lost Roland as a result of the collision. There it is there. I mean, all of a sudden he realized he's made a mistake. Look at that shoulder. Oh, no. I, I hope I'm wrong, but if that's the shoulder, we're... we're of what happened with Luis Gonzalez. Started that a minute ago. I just hope not. We don't know. I mean, we, we're going in and we get a report, we will. It's like he's obviously he's just gone down the store. You know, I mean, that's that's why so many people watch baseball games in October because you're going to see the best players. You, you want to see Luis Gonzalez and Scott Rowland play in these games. Finley, uh, you were right, muscle cramp in his left hand. That was why he left. But that, I, I knew he came out of the last start because of a blister. That was my first thought. But then when you saw him there with the trainer trying to stretch that hand out, it, it, it just, there was some dehydration involved right there. I mean, maximum effort on every single pitch, as just about every start with Kurt Schilling is going to be. Ask Matt Morris. He hooked up twice last year and both terrific pitching duels. Lenny Johnson hoping he can pitch in game number four, but there is one. <laughs> and here's Koplov making the play himself, pouncing off the mound to get the pinch hitter Marrero to pop up in foul ground, two out. We don't see pitchers catch pop-ups very often, no, but bizarre. because of the fact there was two strikes, Matt Williams, as we know, will play a lot deeper than most people. He was going to be questionable whether he could get there. Damian Miller didn't know for sure. And, you know, even though pitchers are called non-athletes, uh, sometimes we can catch those things. Not always. That might be a web gem. Tonight, There's yeah. good wheels by Coppola. Here's Tino Martinez. He's strong. About 300 his last 50 games. Didn't do much in these two games, except that you know that he's a pretty much of a vacuum cleaner over there at first. Boomer, here's where he gets you though. Spots like this. Mm -hmm. You know, he just he just adds that run that you need. You know, he, when he hits his homers, they normally are the difference in a ball game because they're either grand slams or, or three run homers. Two and one. Again, a, a pitcher he's not seen before. You know, you got to take a few pitches to to just see, kind of size him up. Only one at bat for Tino against Mike Koplov. You now all of a sudden know you're going to see five pitches, and you got a, you got a better idea of what you're dealing with. That was the whole first half for him this year. 
just seen as many pitches as he possibly could. Oh, the change at top off there. Sometimes it's an advantage when you change leads. If you're a pitcher, maybe oh, Richard Finley is certainly seeing, but Tino took him a while, even backgrounds, right? In backdrops of the way you stand at the plate, the different ballparks, you've never seen him. Waved at that one as well. So one, two, three hitting for the reliever. Koplov in the heart of the diamond back order coming up in the bottom of the eighth. One nothing St. Louis. Throws you a tough pitch and it tests your staying power. It never hurts to have a deodorant with a little extra muscle. New Arm and Hammer Ultramax wetness protection plus the pure power of baking soda. Time release for long lasting odor protection. Extra muscle for the game of life. The heat is on when mozzarella, pepper jack, cheddar, and nacho cheese sauce form a taste to die for. Don't miss the new cheese extreme quesadilla. Mm, four cheeses. Four, four. You gotta be insane. <laughs> Berman, Rick Sutcliffe with you here in the bottom of the eighth inning. The champion Diamondbacks facing a 2-0 deficit, facing their aces, perhaps losing these two games. They got six out with, with something to do about it. Don't miss the extreme illusions of Chris Angel. Is that me? In an all-new original special, Mind Freak. That is me, premiering Sunday, October 20th, part of the 13 nights of Halloween on ABC Family. I, honestly, I'd never heard of it, but you've got me interested now. I'm going to watch. Well, Eli Marrero has stayed in the game, Rick, and he will play left field, which means Albert Pujols goes to third base. As soon as there is information on Scott Rowland and his shoulder, we will tell you, we can tell you, that Rick White is pitching to Greg Colburn to begin the bottom of inning number eight, and he starts him with a strike. You know, Boomer, there's, there's big numbers in baseball, and sometimes, you know, stats don't tell the whole story, but one stat for Rick White this year was 29 of 35 inherited runners did not score. That trend continued with the base running to under by Arizona. Cutting across his pool holes, and already you could see a change. I mean, that's a play that a third baseman, a good one, will try to make. Although Renneria certainly was right there to in position, and already advantage Arizona here with this move. Well, I, he, I mean, he does everything right. I mean, he takes the right angle. He just forgets to secure the baseball. And I agree with you. I mean, you, you, you're coming into a new position right now. You've not been there in a while. You know, I might have let Edgar Renteria handle that ball as well. You like the aggressiveness on the part of Pujols, but you just you question the decision somewhat. Not that he wanted any part of this at all. But Cintron ran them out of a rally the last time up, but now maybe the change of third has opened up a possibility for the rally with Matt Williams. Matty 
three for nine against Rick White, but one of those three left the yard. If you leave the yard now, this crowd, they're going to leave their seats. Behind first, Vina now coming over. Tino's lost it. Looked like he did. Danny looked up and grabbed it. And there's one out. To Matteo for four. Vina wanted to call him off. Yeah, right there he's saying, I got it. Get out of the way. I've got it. I mean, kind of a, a, a weird little angle. I mean, he really didn't get behind the ball, turn around, and, and square, but obviously felt comfortable and had it all the way. How about Vina, just in case of the old the Pete Rose bobble from Boo? You know, the, I'm ready for you to get the, the, the carom, just in case. Yeah, Dave Duncan out on the mound, the pitching coach. Uh, talk about White working with Finley. Dave Veers, the righty. The veteran lefty, another one of those late season pickups for the Cardinals, Jeff Vicero. As Tony, who has won 1,924 postseason uh, regular season games. Eighth all time. Next year, 2,000 wins he'll get. He wants one this afternoon. He's not thinking any farther than that. When there's so many decisions, Boomer, for a manager to make. You got a left handed hitter, you got a left handed reliever ready to go, but you don't make the move. I have to say that he's been here before. Ninth time he's taken a club to the postseason. Four cards, four A's. No one remembers one White Sox. Well, and, and you know, too, you, you think about White here. All right, that is a go ahead run at home plate, but what has Rick White done run, wrong yet? I mean, we got a ground, two ground balls to third. We got a little pop up to first. He's been terrific. Misses away to Finley one and one. He singled his last time up and struck out. And moving to the second. When you think about Homer, Steve Finley's at 227 during the regular season. But you know what? He has only one home run and now 125 postseason at bats. You're saying he's due? Over. Just below us. Counters one and two. You know, and one thing that happened, I've, I've seen Steve Finley for a long time. I pissed against him. I, I saw him with the puck. Watch his back leg. Look at how low it got and how it collapsed. That's what happens when he struggled. He drops that back leg and tries to lift the baseball. Hence, a lot of times, missing good pitches to hit, as was that last one. Takes it inside. Two and two. You know, you, it, with, with runners in scoring position during the season, any at bat in the postseason, you know, you, you just sometimes you grip the bat a little bit harder. You grip the baseball a little bit tighter. The guys that can relax are the guys that perform best in these situations. It really helps Steve Finley in the fact that he's been there before. Struggled in 1998. In the World Series against the Yankees, struggled that whole postseason. He didn't struggle last year. Overall, hitting 365 for Arizona last year. 19 for 52 in the postseason last year. That was last year. Mm -hmm. What have you done for me lately? Mm -hmm. Base hit. The answer would be quite a bit. He skies this one as well. This time, Renneria does take charge on the left side of the infield. There are two outs. We should tell you, they, uh, well, we'll, Scott Rowland, it is a left shoulder injury that they're looking at now. There is an x-ray facility here in Bank One Ballpark. They'll take a look. That's, so in other words, if we haven't advanced it much, they're x-raying it as we speak on the left shoulder. Watch the back knee. Look how low the knee gets. And what happens when you drop that back knee, 
that means that your eyesight has dropped. So where the baseball once was when you originally spotted it, it's not there anymore because you've taken your eyesight down about two inches. That two inches is what he's missing those baseballs by. So now it falls to Quentin McCracken. The Q 0 for 3 thus far today. Two this, hits in game one. Isn't this something? I mean, uh, Quentin McCracken was signed to a minor league contract back in January. Who would have thought? Slicing toward the seats down the left field line, and it'll get there. Marrero giving it a look down the left field, as we told you. I mean, I, I think and this is not a knock on Quentin because he's had a great year. But this is the world championship team right here. They're world champions. Last year, they had so many offensive things to throw at you. They had power from everywhere. Right now, the only power that Bob Brindley has on his bench are left-handers. Now, he's saving them in hopes they get an opportunity to face Isringhausen, but that's the one left-hander he needed most. But Quentin McCracken hits it on the nose to right field, and it's off the wall. Colbert being away at the right. We're tied at one. Q is a okay here at the bottom. Well, with solid defense, it would have been a 1-2-3 inning for Rick White. As we said, up to that point, he had done nothing wrong. Well, he finally makes a mistake. Quentin McCracken. I mean, once again, a guy you didn't expect when the season started to possibly even make the team. All of a sudden ties this ball game up. He's a go-ahead run at second base, and he has got one excited manager in Bob Brindley. So McCracken at second with the potential go-ahead run and Damian Miller up. It's the sixth Diamondback hit. And obviously run unearned, but nobody cares. It's 1-1. One, one. season victory that Chuck Finley has wanted for so long once again won't happen. He will take a victory of his team. That's his concern, although that certainly is a concern right now. Chris Donald's talking with Greg Colburn about, you know, in case I get in at bat here in this inning. With Mark Little in the on deck circle, it could be done. He wants to know what Colburn saw in that one at bat he had against Rick White. Yeah, the Diamondbacks have not led at all in this series. They've only been tied for a half inning in game one. We can change all that here in the bottom of the eighth. Two and one the count to Miller. Renteria, Matheny, and the pitcher spot due up in the ninth for the Cards. Inside and up, three and one. Tony well, Russo deciding to stick with Rick White. Some will be surprised he didn't go to a left-hander to get Quentin McCracken to hit from the right side. McCracken had all three of his homers this year hitting left-handed. Also had 17 of his doubles hitting from the left side. In the dirt, blocked by Matheny, and now Miller on. You know, right when we thought that the base running mistake on the part of Alex Centron cost him this, you know what it did? Yeah. It put Albert Pujols at third base, took Roland out of the game, got 
this ball game into the position it is, which is tied, and this crowd's going crazy. And the reason they're going crazy is Little's been called back from the bench, and Mark Riggs will step up to be the pinch hitter just announced, and here goes the crowd bonkers. way to keep track of what's on this month? Think again. There's an easier way to follow what's on TV with Channel Guide magazine. Never miss your favorites with Channel Guide's easy-to-read grids, including local programs. Plus, you'll find every movie on cable from A to Z and get the scoop on the best shows, stars, and more. So make a note to ask your cable company for Channel Guide. It may be the last note you'll ever make. The Swiffer Wet Jet Power Mop with Jet Action Sprayer gives your floor a better clean. Here's how it works. You simply spray, mop, and toss. Watch. The Wet Jet Pad absorbs three times more dirt and liquid, locking it deep inside. That's because only Wet Jet Pads feature a super absorbent lockaway core. And they have these unique cleaning cups that sweep up dirt and hair. To get your Swiffer Wet Jet, go to a store near you and look for the purple box. For a limited time, call the toll-free number for a $5 off coupon to get your Swiffer Wet Jet for only $19.99. Pizza new Buffalo Chicken Kickers. Tender cuts of all white chicken breast with a kick of spicy buffalo flavor baked through and through. Ten pieces for $5.99. You the chicken man! Hit the door and get a kick out of dinner tonight. Now get an order of Cinestics free when you buy a large one-topping pizza for $9.99. the Cardinals, but here's the situation with a couple of base runners. Kraken and Miller aboard, and the veteran lefty, Jeff Facero, worked C1 inning two nights ago. Game number one, Facero, bucking towards 40, still can buck towards Nasty on the hill. Chicago Cubs. Walt Jockety just says, decides I'll take a chance on him. My scouts tell me he's got some life left in his arm, and he proved that. The new third baseman is Miguel Cairo. He will hit in the nine hole, the pitcher spot. Albert Pujols, in the span of an inning, has gone from left to third to first. For Sarah will Bat in the sixth spot, so Tino Martinez out. And Mark Grace up against 39 years young Jeff Vicero. Swinging at the first pitch and lofting it to right. It's Drew in the sun, and he makes the play. So not much suspense there. Vicero does it with one pitch, but when McCracken has tied this thing up.
always got time for a Reese's fast break. Creamy Reese's peanut butter, nougat, covered in milk chocolate. Get lost in a Reese's fast break. When life throws you a tough pitch, that tests your staying power. It never hurts to have a deodorant with a little extra muscle. New Arm & Hammer Ultramax Wetness Protection plus the pure power of baking soda. Time release for long-lasting odor protection. Extra muscle for the game of life. The heat is on when mozzarella, pepper jack, cheddar, and nacho cheese sauce form a taste to die for. Don't miss the new cheese extreme quesadilla. Mm, four cheeses. Four. You gotta be insane. <laughs> we would say now is the time for some white knuckles here at Bank One Ballpark. One run, seven hits, one error, St. Louis. One run, six hits, no errors, Arizona. Chris Berman, Rick Sutcliffe, glad you could join us for what's become the first pitching duel of this, the postseason in 2002. Kurt Schilling and Chuck Finley started it off. They're now gone as Edgar Renneria starts off perhaps a rally in the ninth for St. Louis. Boomer, he, he, he's a man now. He's not a kid anymore. I know he hit six yesterday and seven today for Tony La Russa, but that's just because he's been so productive there. That's a terrific pitch that's going to get most people out. Right now, Edgar Renneria is, is, is not an average player. Couple of changes defensively for the Diamondbacks. Well, and, and an opportunity to manage a little bit here. That sacrifice bunt, not a given. Koploff slow to the plate because of that sidearm delivery. Speed at first base. Brother Mark Grace is also at first base. So that's a defensive upgrade for Arizona. Dave DeLucci has gone into left field. It just means you may better make a pretty good bunt if you push it to first base. Lucci will hit in the three hole. Grace obviously pinch hitting, staying in the game. Lucci hitting in Colburn's spot. Athene bunts it. Grace fields it. Shovel to Spivey. Renneri at a second, one out. Told you it was going to take a good bunt. Well, that's exactly what Mike Matheny gave Tony LaRussa and the Cardinals. Look at him out there. Perfect fundamentals. You saw how, how he, the bat came back after it made contact with the baseball. Just like he catches at home plate, he just simply caught that baseball with the end of the bat this time. So now the first at bat for Miguel Cairo. There's the third base now for St. Louis. Not his first pinch hit of the year, though. Nope. This will be the 60th pinch hit appearance this season. Already 19 hits. More importantly for Tony La Russa, 10 RBIs. Against Koplov up the middle, diving his spider, he can't get it. Renneria being waved around. The throw from Finley is cut off by Grace. Throw in the second, all hand safe. Three, two, the Cardinals lead it two to one. How about Miguel Cairo? I mean, here's a guy that was given up on by Tampa Bay, given up on by the Chicago Cubs, and yet they found a role for him. Not an everyday type player, but a versatile type guy that could get some big pinch hits, but none bigger than the one he just got. You talked about him as a pinch hitter. The bunt was perfect. Renneria getting it going. And so the hero thus far is the 28-year-older from Venezuela, Miguel Cairo. And the Cards have the lead. Um, Steve, I don't think you should hang the bug zapper over the Bud Light. That's really tacky. Yeah. Great party. Thank you. Yeah, this dip is fantastic. Great. Mm. I love these crunchy things on top. Are they caraway seeds? Yes. <laughs> you didn't put anything in the dip. With a great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Great party, guys. Fun. Make it a Bud Light. Katie Burke lives in fear of a man everyone else thinks is dead. My old boyfriend's back. He's been watching me. On October.
October 18th. I go away but look what happens. She's the only one who can stop him. Wherever you go, I can follow. Katie Holmes. Why are you doing this? Benjamin Brad. What are you gonna do about it? Move on with my life. Abandoned. Ready PG-13. Starts Friday, October 18th everywhere. music and ominous delivery of Mike Myers, but an ominous moment here for the Arizona Diamondbacks, who now trail it 2-1. Well, a huge base hit by Cairo. You know with the rent to Rhea and his speed, it was going to be a difficult play at home. But let's take a look at the throw by Steve Finley. Normally, as accurate and consistent as any outfield you'll ever find. But this one not only pulled Damian Miller off home plate, but by not hitting the cutoff man, Mark Grace. Gracie having to go well over to his left. Look at it. He couldn't get anything on the throw to second base. Because of that, Cairo would have been out the second out. Instead, there's only one out, another Cardinal runner in scoring position. Different reaction there on the Cardinal bench. Well, and, and that is, those are bench players. That's Robinson, that's Eduardo Perez, guys who have been on that bench all year long with Miguel Cairo. They're going to root the loudest for him. Here's Myers, who starts his throwing in Tucson and ends up in Yuma by the time it gets <laughs> to the plate. Ball one. I wouldn't be surprised to see Cairo try to take off here. I, it's not the ideal situation because you got a left-handed hitter in there. Catcher with a clear shot at third. But Myers is so slow to the plate. Well, that ball was quick down the line, but fouled by Vina, who has three hits in each of the two games thus far here in Arizona. Boy, he's given him a big lift all year long in that role. I mean, he didn't wait on anything. The first pitch he saw near the strike zone, he took a good swing at it. And up to this point right now, I guess the biggest hit of the year for the yes. Cardinals by Miguel Cairo. And now Myers has Cairo picked off and tagged out. Not the best base running play of the year for the Cardinals. Well, he got the green light, which, which I thought he might, but you have to make sure the pitcher goes to home plate. Mike Myers just kind of took a look into the eyes. You know, you, you, you really don't see anything by his lead there. He wasn't off that far. But that's not what you look for when you turn around to check the runner. You look into his eyes. You look to see if his body is doing anything different than it normally does. You put on the simple little spin move by Myers. If he's going on first movement, he gets out there in no man's land. You just have to clear the rubber and then make the run down. You don't have to make that throw to second. Vinian is waving at that thing. We do want to get this across in a hurry. Good news for St. Louis, at least as we understand it. Left shoulder sprain for Scott Rowland, but X-rays negative. Oh, one more time. For him to come out of the game, it's, 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 it's a big time sprain. Finley coming, won't get there in time. And now how important is that pickoff play? Vina with his fourth hit, seventh hit so far in the series. You know, you never know. I mean, you, 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 you toss a coin if you're Tony La Russa. He's going to have to answer some questions after the game. But, you know, this game is about players, all right? He put on the green light. If you get a jump, you know, and the pitcher's going to home, take off. Well, that, that's not Tony's fault. But Tony's the one that's going to have to answer the questions when it's said and done. What if he'd have stayed at second? Does that mean the same pitch would have been thrown by Myers to Vina? I mean, there's just a lot of intangibles that, you know, are going to keep me from becoming a manager. J.D. Drew skies it. This should end it. Grace calls for it. We head to the bottom of the ninth. Will this be the last half inning that these fans get a chance to see the Diamondbacks? We'll see. Oh, it's funny. 
Sometimes I hit a lot of home runs and sometimes nothing. Yeah, man, I know what you mean, because sometimes I score a lot of touchdowns and sometimes I don't. Yeah, some months I make a lot of phone calls, others not so many. That's why 1010-220 is so great. It's cheap, whether you use a little or a lot. All calls up to 20 minutes are 99 cents. It's perfect for me. Yeah, and sometimes Emmett buys me lunch. Sometimes Emmett do what? And sometimes Emmett leaves a big old fat tip. <laughs> Dial 1010-220, then one and the number. have forged a 2-1 lead heading to the bottom of the ninth. They have beaten Randy Johnson. Can they win a game in which Kurt Schilling has started? Can they go back home leading two games to none? That's the plot here. Plot in Atlanta. Can the Giants win two games in Atlanta? On Fox tonight at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 5 Pacific. Both games, ABC Family tomorrow, 4 Eastern, A's and Twins tied 1-1 in what will be an emotional Homer Dome. Yankees, Angels, those fans have been waiting forever for this. And in Anaheim, that's John and Joe at 8 Eastern, 5 on the West Coast. But that's tomorrow. This is now today. Tony La Russa had Jeff Passero take the warm-ups. Chris Donalds, the left-handed, was announced as the pinch hitter. La Russa to the mound, Facero out. Jason Isringhausen in. Chris Berman, Rick Sutcliffe, we'll be back.
season now has a chance for his first with the cards. Well, Boomer, what, you wonder what happened there. Why did Tony La Russa change his mind? Well, he sent Pissarro out to start the inning just in hopes that Bob Brimley would go with his only right-handed pinch hitter, that being Rod Barajas. When he didn't do that, Tony knew he was going to go get his stop. And so Chris Donalds, the pinch hitter, remains in as he would lefty versus righty, but Donalds only had two hits all year long against left-handed pitchers, but that was in only nine at-bats. What were the two hits? Both of them, Boomer, left the yard. One foul back. You know, we, we were Tony Roos is always thinking of, 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 of positive things. You know, we, we mentioned before Game One how the schedule with the off days really helped Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling. You know, Randy pitches on his normal rest. If he makes it to Game Four, Kurt can come back for Game Five. Tony said, "You know what? It helps us too, because with the cranky shoulder Jason Isringhausen has had." Now we don't have to throw him back to back. If he were to pitch in game one or in game two, he's available for game three. Man. Yeah, absolutely. Didn't pitch in game one with the 12 2 score for the cards. There's the day off tomorrow. They play Saturday, Sunday. St. Louis would play Monday here. If we go that far. Yankees last year spotted Oakland two wins in New York came back to win it. This little best of five round hadn't gone on very long since 95. That's the only time that has happened. We're not done here yet of course. But Donalds skies it. Matheny takes charge and there is one out. Since 1987 the Cardinals have been in seven postseason series. They're perfect when they win game one, as they have done, starting at 87 when they beat the Giants in a best of seven NLCS. They're 0-4 when losing game one, as they did last year in this round against the Arizona Diamondbacks. As we said the other night, I know 1987 it doesn't have any bearing, or 1996 doesn't have bearing on this now, but just interesting fact that I'm sure Redbird fans and all watching very happy. Tony Womack fouls it off from Misery House and strike one. You know, I saw another thing too when the divisional series started this year in the National League. Teams that won game one of the divisional series had went on to win the series 12 out of 14 times. It wasn't anywhere near like that in the American League. American League teams that win the first game only won the series six times out of 14. Numbers change if it's too old. Little chopper, Womack will motor, Vina, true over to Pujols, and the Diamondbacks are down to their last out here at home. They know what they're up against, Boomer. They know is as fun as this crowd has been for them here at home all year long. It's going to get even crazier for game three in St. Louis. Absolutely. St. Louis 22 and 4 since September 3rd. They and the Giants are the hot clubs in the National League. You know, I, Boomer, I, I'm shocked with all of the hits and runs they scored in game one off Randy Johnson. The Cardinals have put together 10 hits here in this ball game. A game started by Kurt Schilling, but the biggest story to me is as we expected without Luis Gonzalez, Arizona can't score. Junior Spivey singled way back in the first. One for four overall. Two hits in this series. Can he prolong it? Just foul. Ooh, yeah, who is right? Why weren't we guarding the line? Oh, it's not rolling in the third. I don't care who it is. Isn't he supposed to be on top no. of the bag? No, I mean, he, 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 Roland would know it. Cairo is somewhere. If that ball gets down the line, it, it, it's, it's a double, at least a double. 
the book says you got to have the guys on the corners on the line. Tony La Russa doesn't always go by that book. And there it is. Isringhausen comes in with a 1-2-3 night, and the St. Louis Cardinals have come in and defeated Randy Johnson and won a game in which Kurt Schilling is pitched. Chuck Finley was marvelous, and the Redbirds will be winging home. I don't even think they need a plane. They win it 2-1. Boomer, just like this is Derek Jeter's time of the year, so is it Edgar Renteria's. He proved it again today. So high fives all around. puts the finishing touches on. That bullpen has been one of the strengths of the St. Louis Cardinals all year long, but I think the biggest story of the afternoon was Chuck Finley and his terrific start, giving them a chance to win. Well, you have to wonder if this will be the final time that these world champion Diamondbacks will be seen here in Bank One Ballpark. Now, this is a team that got off of the ultimate mat in Game 4 and 5 at the World Series last year. But this St. Louis Cardinal team, there, there's, we've sensed it in the locker room. You've seen them the final week. There's a confidence in every spot in the batting order. There's a confidence in just about every spot in the bullpen. And there is some heart of which we cannot overstate. Boomer, and you know what? You, you think there'd be a lack of confidence in their starting rotation with, with all of the injuries. I mean, Chuck Finley struggled with Cleveland, 4 and 11. You think about Andy Bennis, he he'd retire. He was at home taking care of the kids, being a, a father. And you think about Jason Simatachi. I mean, he was uh, pitching on the Italian team a couple of years ago independently and yet Tony Russo says every time we get worried about them they, they, they just keep coming up big for us and that was really the story here this afternoon as for Arizona their two big guns have come out and they've come away with no wins and without Luis Gonzalez this is a team just scratching for any sort of momentum let alone runs we uh, let's go down to a guy that certainly lit the lamp, shall we say, Mark Schwartz, with Fernando Vina, Mr. Multi-hit in both of these games. Chris, indeed, he has seven hits in his last eight at-bats. How difficult is that to do against the kind of pitching that you're facing in this series, Fernando? It's tough. I mean, this is, it's no secret. Uh, Randy and, and Shield, I mean, they're the best in the world, period. I mean, they, they got a great team over there, and uh, they're the world champs. So we're just trying to grind, and I'm just trying to go up there and, and, and get on base and do things and, and help my team. Now, in this situation against Kurt Schilling, he has now faced you guys three times in the postseason. He has allowed exactly two runs, both of them, J. A.D. drew home runs. Coincidence? Uh, he's amazing. I mean, I, I, he's so tough. Uh, Randy's nasty as could be. I mean, these guys are just incredible. And you got to go up there and grind and battle. And J.D. picked us up with a, a, a you know, got the good piece of the bat on it and uh, picked us up big time. Did you expect Chuck Finley to come up as big as he did? Six and a third shutout innings in this situation. He's never won a postseason game. Yeah, I mean, I, I got all the confidence in the world in Chuck. I mean, he's, our, he's a gamer. He's a bulldog. And he came out. And that's uh, why he's over here with us. You know, I mean, he comes and, and does his job. And, and uh, tremendous. You know, he's a lot of respect for him. You shocked that Alex Cintron took out Scott Rowland at third base? I don't think it was. I think it was just trying to get to third base. I mean, a young guy playing hard. I don't think it was anything intentional. And Scotty going for the ball. Uh, you know, hopefully, God willing, Scotty will be all right, and we can have him back for Saturday. Sounds like a shoulder sprain. Fernando, if I told you you would beat both Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling here in Arizona coming in, what would you have said? You know, I would say, uh, you know, I hope so. I hope we can do that. I mean, because like I said, these guys are the best around. And uh, for us to do what we did is something special. But there's still a lot of work to be done. And, and we have to go back home, and hopefully we can uh, win one more game here. Fernando Vina on fire. The Cardinals go home with a two-zip lead. Chris, back up to you. All right, Mark and Fernando, thank you. Four for five, Fernando Vina. Rick Sutcliffe and I will be back here at a very quiet Bob with the Cardinals winning 2-1 with a run of the night. Same exact heartworm and flea. If the lieutenant.